Welcome back to 1010 Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Rio. I'm sitting in the Kanga Motorsports studio, and I do not have Adam on Zoom. Woo! Can you believe it? Woo! It's, that's a nice shirt you got it's there. It's been over a year. Yeah, it has. I, like, there's been a pile of stuff accumulating. I see to, that right here in front of me. Do you even remember what's, what's in that pile? I don't even genuinely know. What's in the envelope? You don't remember? No. Oh, the, our fan, our friend, is going to be offended that you forget. Look at it. It's probably been over a year. Almost, yeah. Oh, man. There's a bunch of Petrobox masks that, of course, now you don't you don't need as often because you already have a bunch. And then your kitty mask is there. There's a T-shirt that was gifted to you from a close, close oh, friend. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. I forgot all about this shirt. <laughs> oh, man, that's rad. I forgot about this. Thank you, Dusty. Yeah, it says Volvo Motorsports on the front. Oh, it does? I don't know. Oh, Oh, look at that. It does say Volvo Motorsports on the front. And then it's got the S60R design on the back, and it's been signed by Randy Pobst. Yeah, I could have got you that signature any time if I <laughs> just asked. I mean, I don't know why it's so special that Dusty gave it to you. I could have got you one. Just, hey, Randy, let's hang While out. While you were standing there with the, in the beginners meeting with yeah, him. Yeah, we him and I were equals. Yeah. Be- beginners and equals. Yeah, equals on a level <laughs> playing field. Basically the same guy. What did he drive? Uh, the What's the Porsche... Oh, that's right. He was in one of the, like, the GT2 RSs or something like that. No, no, that's it? Ross Bentley. Ross Bentley was. Oh, okay. Uh, Randy Post was in the... What's the ugly crossover that uh, Porsche makes? Not the Panamera. The the crossover? Not the full set. So it's either the K- the Cayenne, which is the bigger one. Yep. Or the Taycan. I, no? I, I, I want to say... Taycan? Is it t- or is that the... Cayenne? I want to say it was the Taycan. I thought that... Or is that the uh, the one. EV? Mm, it wasn't an EV. Right. Porsche Taycan. Yeah, that's the EV. Oh, no, it was not the Taycan. It was a Cayenne. What is, no, Cayenne's the big one. There's another one, though. Kaya? That's not going to help me. No. <laughs> Come on. Apparently, that's a contraceptive. Uh, oh, God damn it. Porsche Cayenne. See, this is why we need uh, Michael. It was. I'm pretty sure it was a Cayenne. Cayenne's the big one. There's a small one, too. Porsche crossover. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. It's the... the M- McCann. The, McCann. the McCann. That's what that, it is. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Yeah. It was one of those. That's um, like rogue sized. Yeah. That's, and the Cayenne's a bit bigger. Yeah, I think you're I think it was the Macan. Because it was okay. it was it wasn't huge. Like it wasn't a full size SUV. Mm-hmm. But it was big enough that they had like a full size um U Haul. Or not full size, but like a bigger trailer. A, yeah, like a like a small U haul that you could fit like enough stuff, like bikes and. Like, Why do they need that? They have a whole back seat and they had, cargo. They had, they had four people on the team, oh. so they had like a whole support system. Now Bill and I were to run a stock Porsche McCann. I think you did more like, um, like social media type stuff. I think there was more to it. I'm, I'm assuming some of the guys were from. It's like probably like a road, road and track, track thing, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so you're, or a motor trend thing. I'm assuming you're not wrong. I think I think he's done some motor trend stuff. Yeah, so I got because we were kind of like half joking about like, well, that's bullshit. He gets the whole, he gets a trailer and like a full SUV, and we got yeah. like two golf bags. Well, you could have put a hitch on that bad boy. No, actually, there was a couple of people that were like, they need to go away with that. Like, they need to just have it be the car. Like, no whatever. trailers, no trailers. Like, that's how you limit, you know. I, I don't know how I feel about. It. Like I don't and know I, that I really care. I, yeah, that's that's where I was. I was like, I, I mean, it's not like you're pulling a full car trailer. Like you're pulling, you know, like like what Scott right. was pulling, right? Because I mean, you're not going to fit shit in that Miata, right? So like, I, I, I could kind of see both sides of the argument. It's definitely not enough that I have a strong opinion one way or another. But like, I think that, I mean, you guys did it without a trailer. Yeah, and I think that what brought it up was like that SUV. I mean, it had four people in it, so but it had like. Clearly a very large trailer compared to everybody else's. Yeah, okay. And that kind of brought up that conversation. Where they're like, well, I feel like that's kind of defeating, you know, getting away from the spirit of the event. And I'm like... Oh, There's that word again, Robbie. Whatever. <laughs> spirit of. Yep. So, I was like, so well, many I mean, people have their own opinion of the spirit of any event on the planet. Exactly. My spirit was and seeing how you know fast who, I could do it. You know who's, who the, the only opinion that matters when it comes to spirit of any event the Brock. person putting it on. Yeah, Brock. Brock Yates. Yeah. Or, Brock Yates gets to decide how his event is run, and you can either deal with it or not run it. Those are your options. That was kind of his uh, 
his words, like when uh, he goes, "These are the rules," and because like he was pretty serious about like masks and stuff. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he goes, "Like the numbers aren't great right now. They, like I understand everyone's opening, mm-hmm. but you know we're representing the sport. You're representing you know the charity foundation. All you know, like just he goes, "This is my event. I have your money. If you don't like it, get out. Yeah, you know, wear your masks if you're in a group inside. It was, I mean." It, it, if you're outside, away from people, who, who cares? But like he was, it was very just like here are the rules. This is my event. Deal with it. Right. And I like that. Yeah. Even even on the things that I disagreed with him on, I still completely respected his opinion, and I right. I, I didn't argue with it. Right. Like the, I think talking on the podcast about how I would have preferred to kick the Mustangs. I mean, the drivers out of Atlanta Motorsports Park rather than everybody. Well, that I was wonder, the, that was the only thing that I was vocal on that I you know, honestly disagreed with. Do you know? Uh, was that the track or the event that kicked them? That kicked everybody. Out? I honestly don't know. I, I don't know if Brock was the one that made the call that yeah. said, "You know what, tech with it, we're all leaving," or if it was the the, was the track that said, "You know." Or I wonder if maybe it was more of a like, um, if it was Brock that made that decision, maybe it was more of a like, "Screw A and P. You guys yeah, don't I, clearly don't need our business. We're not coming I don't, back." I don't think it was. I think it was. If I had to guess, I think it was a it was a combination of like a because I mean he had no good options. It was either you kick people out, then you said you weren't gonna, or you 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 just take that event and kick everybody out. I mean, it was kind of a rock and a hard place. And to me, I would have made a different decision, but like you know, I'm not in that position to make that decision. Yeah, I think you know, and yeah. rules are rules, and if you can't follow them, then not everyone mm-hmm. should suffer. And I think Brock's also on the. Again, I'm making a lot of assumptions. I didn't talk to him about it, obviously. Right. right. But I, I would say that he's probably on the, uh, you know, race cars are loud. They're supposed to be loud side of the argument. So mm-hmm. I think that when when I've radically shifted on how I feel, so about have I. That. I've clearly gotten old because yeah. I'm okay with a 103 limit. I actually really liked that part of NCM. I th- I think NCM 100s a little tough, especially when the houses are right there, and like they'll complain even when it's below 100. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that, I, but one hundred three, I thought was that's missed up pretty loud. Yeah. So I don't. I I'm not mad about a one hundred three. Like that's if someone if we go to a track and they say it's a one hundred three limit, like that's that's easy to meet in my opinion. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I don't know. But so. spirit of the event, it was great. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> But yeah, I could have I could have got that signature seven days in a row. I, if you, yeah, you know, I, I could have signed seven different Petrobox shirts. But it wouldn't have been on that T-shirt. You could. That's sent, the cool part about that. I is could. That it's a you, Volvo Motorsports T-shirt. You could have sent that with he me. He drove could, that car. Oh, okay. he raced it. All right, then it matters a little. bit. That's why it's cool. I don't know how Dusty ended up with that. I don't, I don't remember. There was a story, and I don't remember it. Well, it's been so long. Yeah, over a year. I just completely, it's completely slipped my mind <laughs> until just now. It's lucky that mice haven't eaten that and turned into the rat's Is that a nest. problem in this house, Robbie? No. We had enough snakes. There's not, <laughs> not near as many mice. There's a snake right over there. I just saw them yeah, s- yeah. slither across the floor. We got snakes. We got foxes. Deer, as you saw. Yeah, I almost hit a deer coming up your driveway. I know. It's out of control. Yeah, the wildlife out here is great. I don't know. Your dog didn't bite me, so I don't know what's wrong with Booney. But yeah, he bit Booney pretty good in the leg. I mean, he's just a good judge of character. That's been proven <laughs> time and time again. So. I'm not, that's what I find funny is like he got brought back to the um, adoption agency yeah. multiple times because yeah. he didn't fit in with the families right. that, that adopted him. We never had that he's issue. Get a little chunky, Robbie. Getting? He's been chunky for like remember. a long <laughs> time. He's consistently over. I don't over remember 40. him being that big. He is consistently over forty he's, pounds. He's got childbearing hips. He's a, he's a fat boy. Yeah, he's a fat boy. <laughs> Even Kyle's getting fat. Uh, no, Yancey is a fat boy. Yeah, but no, he he doesn't ever like never bit us. Never gave us attitude. Like I don't know, but he, he, it seems to bite everyone that comes to the door. Eric got bit. I've no. He's never given me a trouble. I don't know. It's, I think you can definitely tell when people are dog people or not. I'm not a dog person necessarily. But you have dogs, so you know how to respond to them. I mean, that's fair. Because, yeah, I don't know. Booney didn't want him around, so I think he could tell that. Oh. I mean, See, cats do it the opposite way. 
They yeah. can they can tell you're not a cat person too, but then they really lean into it. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I'm gonna fucking love on you. <laughs> this is going down, whether you want it or not. Yeah, if you want to pet them, they're no. If you, well, you want to pet them, like no, get get off of me. But if you don't want the cat, they know. Yep. Yep. And they want it real bad. That's why I think that every like young preteen boy should have a cat, a pet cat. It's a good training exercise. I had one, yeah. You learn how to, you know, trick a cat into doing what you need it to do for you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same thing. As, tr- as tricking a woman into doing things. Well, I'm not necessarily <laughs> tricking her, but like, you know, how to how to work around the intricacies. You know what I mean? No, I like the way you said it first time. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Just I realized as I said, I'm like, I'm putting myself into a corner right here. <laughs> this is bad. I'm tricking that woman Let's into falling in love with me. <laughs> I'm going to trick you to love me. I'm thinking more like, you know, picking a place to eat and stuff like that. That's impossible. That is impossible. I don't care. I don't care. What about this? No, I hate it. You clearly care a little bit. I, I've i largely resorted now to like... You give me a small list of places, and then I'll go to one of them. I don't even get that. No, like, I don't we, usually. We, either. we just only go to like four places now, and that's it. It's like, well, I'm, I want to go out to eat. All right, so we're going to go to Sushi, Zombie Burger, Red Robin, or Panda Express. That's so, it. So, <laughs> that's so all the, we go. <laughs> the great equalizer is a child. Oh yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's worth it, but he is more than capable of deciding where we're going to eat. Yeah. And so we're probably going to go eat pizza a lot. What's his go-to? Uh, well, here lately we've been going to Pizza Ranch a lot. Uh, that's that, that at least has options because you right. could get that's the buffet or you could it. get chicken. Or, that's like, why we go there. But it's very expensive after a while. Yeah, we went, Jess and I did uh, medium pizza, chicken, potatoes. And a small cactus bread. It was like thirty something dollars. Yeah, if you Actually, go, the three 40. of us, the three of us in there for the buffet is like thirty five bucks, which is ooh steep. God, I haven't had a buffet for because we don't eat that much. No, that's the like problem. as individuals. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Is like a buffet is great value. Yeah, if you eat like a like a fat boy. Yeah, I'm not though. No, and I'd, like I'm lucky if I can get Logan to eat like, like three, a three slice bites. of pizza <laughs> and a and a cheese stick or two. That's that's how they make their money back. Yeah. Oh, they're making their money on my family. Don't you worry. <laughs> Fucking out of control. Yep. So, but speaking of Booney, <clears throat> where was I? <laughs> Should we open this up? <laughs> yeah, let's open this up with uh, Fact Fabrication. If you need to get caged or railed, uh, head over to factfabrication.com. Um, you can get railings for your house or a cage in your car or a cage in your house or a rail in your car. Whatever you need. <laughs> Wait, whoa. I don't know that he's down for putting cages in houses. He put cages in uh, Eatery A. At That's the a business, though. That's different. Like, I would I would definitely have a few very serious questions before I just go cage in houses. All right, I, want my, I want my spare bedroom in my basement to be caged so that anyone in can no longer get out. Yeah, see that's so why that's, that's a red flag. Yeah, that's a red f- that's I believe what I that also is. I also need it to be soundproof because when I launder I, I'm very loud, and I don't want my neighbors to hear me. I feel like uh, uh, in this twisted world legally that we live in, that somehow that would Booney could be responsible for whatever happens inside said cage. A, a good lawyer will get him out of that. Well, he, he didn't know anything fair. about it. You're probably not wrong. <laughs> that's why you ask, or maybe you don't ask questions. So no, you, you don't. You know. don't ask questions. Maybe it's better if you don't ask questions. Yeah, you, don't, you just build it. You're like here's here's the blueprints. Build it. Okay, if you build can, it. Hopefully they don't come yeah. in this situation. Yeah, yeah. They get stuck there forever. But <laughs> he's never actually built a cage like that. He's only built a cage to Probably. keep me alive. So that's Probably. A, allegedly. A f- friend of the show, Austin Covey, is like very nearly ready to bring his car up here because he needs he just needs a few bars welded in. On his uh, Corvette? On his Corvette. Uh He's got a roll bar, but he wants some extra support added to it. Oh, yeah. And uh, he can't find anybody locally to do it. And he's like, I was literally talking about him, talking to him about it on the way here. He's like inches away from just like, fuck it, loading the car up and bringing it to Iowa. Is, he, is his steel frame or uh, aluminum? Uh, I don't. Is it a Z06? I, th- I don't know. I think it's a Z. That might be the No, problem. he's he's trying to put down bars in the in the on the 
So just 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 sidebars off he, the no, roll bar. No, he bought a roll bar. Yes, but he doesn't like how it's built, so he wants to add to it. So it'd still be a bolt in. Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah, right. I'm, I haven't talked to Booney about it, and I'm not gonna, <laughs> but he'll totally do it. Oh, absolutely. Factorfabrication dot com. Um, if you need that number, uh, just go to the. Uh, it's, on, it's on the website. Go to factorfabrication dot com and click contact. They'll, and it'll load. ring you right and to And then him. the email is info at fabrication.com. And then the phone number is right there. It'll ring you right to him. Yeah, just call it. He's a nice guy. He'll talk. Yeah. Or he won't. I don't know. He's not nice to me. He he loves you. I, that's not what the DMVR board says, Robbie. Hashtag I still hate Adam. I don't know what his deal is. It's because you haven't come to an autocross. You don't either. I hang out at the shop. I uh, I built the cage. Right. I mean, I helped. I paid for a cage. <laughs> I didn't really build it. I was just—you just were there when it was being built. Yeah, I was—I was just slowing him down. Yeah, I'm sure he charged you extra for that. Yeah, oh for sure. I got the—I so. got the friend discount, but it was yeah. like double. Right, it should be. Too. Oh man, the the cost of Dom went up a lot, so I I got to charge you extra. Yeah, he knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Materials are out of control. He said, oh. but that was before the materials were actually out of control. Now they're actually out of control. <laughs> now he feels like a real dick about it. <laughs> yeah, good thing I'm not building the cage this year. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's a bad year to get into wheel to wheel racing for sure. Yep, I bought I bought my truck right before the uh, bubble got crazy. Yeah, that, that shit exploded too. Yeah, because it's out of control. The, uh, one of the guys at work was asking me, "He's like, what'd you pay for that truck?" I was like, "Like thirty two. You got that truck for thirty <laughs> two? I was like, "Yeah, I bought it in July last year." Yeah, He's, I was like, "Yeah, I could sell it and make a profit right now, man." Dalton's, it's, it's Dalton's truck is worth more than MSRP for he could make money on it. Yeah, it's and absurd. his Camaro. Yep, but he's like, I don't. Then what do I do? Yeah, what are you, what are you buying? I still have to buy it again. Like, yeah. so there was a four thousand dollar RV up by Northwest Iowa. Cause I'll be there this weekend, and I showed it to Jess. I was like, you know what we could do? And she's like, didn't even let me finish. <laughs> be great. Be great. I don't know what her deal is. She's like, it's too big. No, it means it's a diesel pusher, and I can I can tow whatever I want. Yeah, absolutely. I can sell the truck, buy this, uh, yeah. buy a little small vehicle, yeah. and then also get a it's, enclosed trailer. It's economical. Yeah, and we'd have money ahead. Yeah, it's just smart. It's good. It's good money management. <laughs> exactly. What's her problem? She's the accountant. She's she spent. She's clearly spent too much time away from the accounting world. Yeah, I, she's I, already lost her touch. I should have just put it out there financially. Like you know, <laughs> if I buy all of this and sell this, we'll have this. You got to appeal to her rational side. Exactly. Plus, you know, insuring this would have been way cheaper than this expensive oh, truck. Campers are super cheap yeah. to insure. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Trailers are cheap, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't either. But anyways, if you need to get caged or railed or um, have any sort of decor, whether it's wood or metal, um, head over to factorfabrication.com. Call Booney. Tell him uh, Adam sent you. Actually, don't do that. Uh, don't Tell him that. Robbie sent you. Yeah, that's probably smarter. <laughs> uh, so, what, so what are we doing today? Uh, this week, we're going to talk about, um, I found this article on Car and Driver. It's uh, how EVs compare to gas-powered vehicles and seven performance metrics. So uh, they took a bunch of test data. Um, Since 2012, so it's not just a slapdash right. three-week thing. Um, and they they compare them across a bunch of things, different um, categories, everything from like speed and acceleration to gas mileage and efficiency and range and stuff like that. And it's kind of interesting to look at it. How do they do gas mileage? Uh, so there's some way that they can calculate... The amount of coal it's burned for electricity. M- it's called MPGE. Okay. And I don't know exactly how it uh, is calculated, but... Um, it's got to be related to the amount of energy used for I think, what I it think would take to... I think that's exactly be, what it is. So is how much the coal of, you burn to create that much electricity. Well, I don't know if it's coal specifically, well, but yeah. I mean, uh, however, the probably... A, Hydroelectric dams, that, right, you know, yeah. all that stuff. The amount of energy it takes to, to cover one mile... Okay. So, and EVs always get like insane ratings. Of course. So, scroll down a little bit. Let's go through this. It's kind of interesting. So, the first one they start off with is um, uh, speed. So, zero to 60 acceleration and quarter mile acceleration. So, the the EVs are a little bit faster here. Because they're torquey, which is no, no surprise. No, sorry. Not the EVs. Oh. Um. The non EV, the internal combustion engine cars, are a little bit faster on average. No, no. The EV is. Oh, you're right. 
Faster. Sorry, I read that back. Yeah. Yeah. I so the EV is 6.4 seconds, 0 to 6, the average acceleration time. And the non-EV is 6 seconds flat. Uh, so what I think – so when a lot of – of course, you know, we are – performance people you know we think like oh evs we just automatic our heads go to teslas and yeah the take performance hands and these things that do like two two zero sixties right yes but like there's a lot of leafs and <laughs> bolts out there that don't yeah that drags that average down real fast right so i think that's where they get that um and then quarter mile acceleration of 14.6 uh for the ev average and a 14.3 for the non-ev average and they talk about it a little bit farther down here part of the reason um, cause they talk about top speeds in this and I think the next one, um, but the, the reason that those get drugged down or that like they're a lot slower, yep. um, is the fact that they don't have transmissions. Oh yeah. And so they're a lot more limited to just whatever you know, acceleration they- curves and stuff like that. And you know, in this one here, they're, they're talking about, um, Rolling's acceleration, so 30 to 50, which is like, they talk about it as like the ability to pass. Oh, that would make sense, yeah. Right. Um, EV average 2.5 seconds, 30 to 50 acceleration, whereas the average uh, internal combustion car is three and a half seconds. So that's a huge difference uh, towards the EV better. Yeah, like, like 30, a full second. Like, yeah, like 30%. A full second, which is huge. But their top speeds are remarkably lower with 109 mile an hour average top speed for the EV and 133 for the for the internal combustion cars. Okay, yeah. So, and they talk about that being that because um, single speed transmissions are good for that quick acceleration for passing. Yep. But they run out of steam sooner. They kind of top and out. And so that's why they do better in that 30 to 50 range where they're accelerating to pass, but they top out a lot sooner. So... It's kind of interesting the huh. way that that plays together. Like, to me, I would much rather have a car that accelerates from 30 to 50 rapidly than tops out at 133. Yeah, because I mean... Like, that's way more useful in yeah, top speed everything means, I do. Top speed means nothing to almost everybody. I mean, it's, it, it's just it's a, a dick measuring thing. It's a cars and coffee dick measuring thing. Yeah. It's 100% what it is. Oh, I got the I got the new Bugatti. It goes 230. Cool. You're going to go 60. Yeah. You're cool, gonna, Like man. the rest of us. Great. Silverado does 62. Yeah. It's pretty great. As well, you mean? No, it also will do 62. Well, that's It fair. will also do 62. <laughs> You're not wrong, I suppose. <laughs> I'll give you that. So, yeah. Uh, the next one, this is where it gets kind of weird. This is the um, range and the mile per gallon average. So, range is is a huge difference. Uh, 179 oh, yeah. miles is the average EV range, which is not very good. It's like what my RAV4 had. Yeah. With its and, like 10 gallon tank. Uh, 485 miles is the average non EV range, which is more than I had, had expected. That, um, I, my, but the tank in the Silverado is less than what the Avalanche had. Oh, really? That's But that's. Me. Yeah, no, it's totally backwards in my mind. But so the the avalanche would go farther on a tank of gas. Uh, it's real close, but it it used like four more gallons to get there. Oh, okay. so like I think that when I fill up the Silverado, it's like twenty two to twenty three gallons, depending on how low I go, which is usually as low as I'll let it. Well, <laughs> it we says know, it we says, know your <laughs> reputation, Robbie. <laughs> well, even last weekend, I'm driving to my parents, and it, I was like, ah, I'll get I'll get fuel at, at Missouri Valley, and it's like it went from being like. Light on to need fuel now. <laughs> that was like blinking at yeah. me. That was when I sent you the picture. Fucking <laughs> rally. Uh, but even then, I filled it up and it was like 23 gallons. Whereas the Avalanche was like, I think it was 27, 28 gallons. But they had roughly the same range? Pretty close because okay. the Avalanche got so, way worse mileage. A lot of my. Uh, but yeah, f- oh, I'm sorry. My, my point being 485, I can do that with the truck. Can you? pretty close so most of my vehicles that i've ever owned like 400 miles is about the limitation of their range it's that's pretty high tank yeah um the the 2020 silverado that i drive at work can get closer to 450 yeah despite the fact that it gets like legit 12 miles to the gallon really uh so it's a 2500 okay yeah it's the bigger truck yep with the giant like the 6.6 or whatever that big gas motor in it 
They and still make the six six. It's a new motor. Oh, I'm thinking the old the the. Is it the diesel six six? I'm thinking no. of. Well, yeah, there is a six six. I don't know if it's a diesel or if it was a gas. I don't know, but this is a brand new motor from oh, 2020. Okay. Uh, and then also, I think that that giant topper and nose cone thing that's in it <laughs> is not. aerodynamically not <laughs> great, and I think it hurts. Yeah, I bet. The best I've ever gotten with that truck on a 400 mile average is like 14 something. Yikes! And that was. Uh, all 60 mile an hour. Wow. Or almost all 60 mile an hour. Last weekend. It's, whereas like usually, like if I'm on the interstate or on a four lane highway where I'm doing 70 or 75, yeah, it's it's like low 12s. Whoa. That's that's what I do pulling the trailer so with the car. Actually, because I took it, I was, because my Monday was an insane day for, for driving. So I actually took a picture of this. Um, I drove 468.8 miles on Monday. Yeah, on one lap or something? I went <laughs> Dude, so so I went from Grimes where where our office is based to Cushing, which is right out it's a tiny little town right outside of Sioux City. Yep. To Sergeant Bluff. Oh, I was boy. within a mile of my parents' old house. Okay. Up into Sioux City, over to Lamar's. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So you went up towards Sioux City and then back down. No, to- so Cushing is on 20. Oh, okay. So it was on my way to Sioux City. So I stopped in Cushing, then I went to Sergeant Bluff and Sioux City. Okay, gotcha. And then I went... Oh, I was thinking Council Bluffs. That no, totally Sergeant Bluff, which that is totally just th- outside of Sioux City. City. Yeah, it's like a suburb of. Sorry. Right? And then I went to Lamar's, uh, and then I went to Sheldon. Lucky you. Yeah, I got to work in Sheldon for a little while, ate, ate supper with Iowa Man, and then drove home from there. Oh. 468.8 miles. That's a long day. 12.4 ga- miles to the gallon that day. E, not great. By the way, I'm really disappointed that Sheldon got rid of their their uh, namesake. I don't know what to tell you, Robbie. The, their, their sign when I roll into Sheldon on Highway 18 <laughs> would always say, Sheldon, a really, a great, really, ni- a really, really nice, nice place. place. And they took that sign down, and now it just says, Sheldon. Stop. A hard stop. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, Robbie. <laughs> like- so when I go from Grimes up to, because I've done some work in like the Lamar Sioux City area lately, more often than, or more than once, right? Right. Um, there's some tiny little town, I can't remember what it's called, but they have a sign out, out as you're coming in, you know, and it says, welcome to whatever. And then it says population. And then there's that like roughly sign, you know, that little like wave, 200. <laughs> 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 roughly 200. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds Which is hilarious. Pretty consistent, <laughs> Northwest Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but anyway, four hundred and eighty-five miles. I feel like that's a long tank, but it's it's well more than double the hundred and seventy-nine mile range on EVs. Um, and then when you're actually out, yeah, you just, when you, when you need more of your propulsion method, yes, you just get it with gas. You got to wait for it with EVs. Yes. So that's rough, but uh, average um, seventy-five mile per hour highway driving is, nice? is what they did. No, it's on oh. that one too. Twenty-nine miles per gallon for the gas cars. Ninety-two miles per gallon E MPGE uh, for EVs, which is crazy. That's a, yeah, it's a huge jump. I don't know how they calculate that though. Maybe I should look into that and we'll talk about it at a different time, but. Vastly more energy efficient. Yes. But you need to plan extra time to push it past their limited ranges. Yes. So 179 miles on a regular basis would not be enough for me in a single day. No, you, it wouldn't work for you. I think for most people that just like commute back and forth to work. Short that distances. Don't, yeah, that just like sit, like even for me, I could yeah. I could get an EV, it'd be fine. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't for your job. There's no I, way. You could I maybe could drive. For my, I could for my daily. Yes, to your, for your commute. Yes, I could for my commute, but my, my work vehicle at this point in time wouldn't work well with that. No. That'd Especially be- since that range um, is the average range, and if a vehicle was as big as my truck is and EV, it would probably be less than that. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? I'm curious how that that's, works. Like, that's including like you know your your bolts and your Leafs, which are small, economical cars. Are going to have longer ranges than like something that would be a three quarter ton pickup sized EV. I'm curious if you could pack more batteries. And I mean, all- I'm sure you could, but that comes at the cost of range yeah. too because of the weight. Right. So it's a struggle. It's a challenge. It's not something that um, I envy them. But like when I've seen most every EV truck that I have seen coming to market. 
up to this point have been half ton yeah targeted at the like the pickup truck market yeah the, 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 like, the f-150s or whatever. right f-150s 1500 silverado sized trucks yeah i'll be, I'll be curious to see what like the was it nicola making the the semi yeah nicola and tesla both have one tesla's not making theirs um yeah, I, I, I assume other semis will come to market first so we're just going to talk about those that's fair um, i don't disagree with that but yeah, i'd be curious to see whatever electric um semi pickup truck not pickup actual truck it's, yeah what that does when yeah. it comes to market yeah i think those are still going to be day cab trucks with like 200 mile ranges i would imagine yes which would be enough for like you know the milk delivery guy and, and stuff like that that or you know what century are you living in no that's totally a thing you see uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you mean the guy that goes and gets milk from the dairies and brings it right. to the cheese plant right okay <laughs> or like you'll see uh like anderson Eckert. Eckerson trucks delivering yep. gallons of milk and dairy products to gas stations and, and yeah, stuff like that. Stores. But they do that from, you know, those are short jaunts. They do it from local distribution plants to. Yeah. Um, like your beer delivery guys that yeah, go to the bars and stuff. Right. Those would be easy, relatively good uses for that. But yeah. over the road, I just don't see it being a thing in the next few years. No, it'll, it'll take some time yeah. for sure. Yeah. Moving on. I'm still not convinced batteries are the answer, but that's a different story for a different day. So yep. the next one is one that I feel less is less important, but um, it's uh, decibels, how loud the vehicle is. So they have uh, two of them. They have the max attack acceleration interior sound. So wh- how loud the vehicle is inside of the vehicle at full throttle. And then also inside the vehicle at 70 miles an hour with the cruise set. Okay. So EV car, or sorry, non EV cars, 78 dB max attack and 70 dB at cruising. EVs, 70 dB at max attack and 68 dB at cruising. So not a remarkable difference, which no. makes sense. Yeah. So you're not getting any um, engine noise. You're just getting yeah, that's, road noise. Yeah. That's literally just like how loud a vehicle is, period. Yep. Well, even like a, a, a conversation is like what, 60 decibels? Yeah, probably. But. The other thing is that this is this is hugely dependent on uh, the vehicle you're driving as much as anything. Like I, I bet if you take the Mustangs out of this, you'd have they'd be equal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, like, and get, get, not the, even that, but like so, like you know, to be specific to the EVs, I'm sure that a Bolt is louder driving down the road at seventy miles an hour than a Tesla. Oh yeah, for sure. Assuming the Tesla's not rattling. Well, yeah, maybe I don't know. So I've I've heard a lot of people say that Tesla has some build quality issues. So I don't know. Maybe like a really cheaply built GM is still not that much louder inside. But you know, okay, how about this? Because I know these are good standards. Like a a Mercedes S Class, yeah, yeah, significantly quieter when you're driving down the road than my 2002 Cavalier. Yes, you know, yeah, for sure. Both both gas powered vehicles. Uh, I would. Th- fucking love to have a car that was only 70 <laughs> db inside while i'm driving down the interstate yeah <laughs> so yeah se- i mean 70 that's just yeah you, you got wind noise you got road noise i mean that, that's that's just what it is i mean yeah. there's, there's no getting around that yeah so, yeah, so. Like, the car basically doesn't play any role at, at, at no i'm actually 70. yeah i'm not surprised that they're only 2 db difference that's not uh, I mean that's still it's still no, a noticeable difference. Yeah, no, because yeah, it's a, it's a log scale. So I mean, yeah. two two so dB is three dB is, is on gen- generally speaking, three dB is double. Yeah, to your perception. Yep. So, but seventy to seventy eight at full throttle, while it does make sense, that is a much larger difference. Yes, but that's you know that's what petrol heads. That's why we love cars. Yeah, we like that noise in to general. It, you know, less than one hundred. I mean, as long as it's not like a. a Straight piped VQ. Hey, 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 it's not straight piped. It's got a resonator and a muffler. Good, I'm proud of you, Robbie. <laughs> it's still loud as shit. Yeah, it is what it is. It's still not. It's still not 109 decibels though. Probably it should be less than 100. No, that would be nice. It's quieter than the 240 was, and the 240 was less than 100. Noise, which is crazy because that thing's loud, like loud, loud. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's loud. Yeah, it doesn't. Like, the cars don't need to be that loud. I, I thought for sure I was going to have to put a muffler or a, a, a silencer in when I was at NCM. Yeah, I, like I was just under the limit for some reason. Like I, they can be, they can be really loud and still not be 
that loud. The 240 is too loud, and it was still within right. NCM limit. That's what I'm, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. The 240 is too loud. If you can't pass sound limitations at most of these racetracks, fucking just knock that shit off. Like we're, we're comparing 78 to 70. And and we got kicked out for a hundred and nine and a half. Yeah, hundred and nine and a half. Yeah, that's obnoxious. <laughs> that's so loud. It's the worst. Oh man, I am old because I yeah. It's that. I'm fine with I'm that. Fi- I'm fine with seventy eight. Yeah. <laughs> Even the VQ, like the problem is the VQ is not that loud outside the car. Like yeah. if like if you're standing on the front straight and I'm I'm going by you, it doesn't sound that bad. Okay. Inside the car. It's for some reason it just like resonates inside the car and it's so loud. It's so annoying. <laughs> so what's Moving. next? Um curb weight. Curb weight. Um these are surprisingly close. Shockingly close. Yeah. And somehow the E V is lower. But I think What are they oh they got pickups and SUVs, so like yeah, that'll yeah, so that's, drag it. That's really gonna screw things up. So uh E V average weight thirty nine thirty nine. Uh, and non EV average four thousand thirty one, so within within a hundred pounds. Yeah, they're they're pretty close. Because you got you're you're taking the Suburbans, which are dragging it up. It's like yeah, you got a le- you're a, not a, a a Juke or right. um, a Chevy Aveo, you know, right. Something like that. So the they do nothing. they do explain in here that EVs are generally more or heavier than their comparable models. They say right in here the. The Ford Mustang Mach E is 500 pounds heavier than an Edge, which is the basically the same size vehicle. Um, so that's a pretty significant difference. 500 pounds. That's a big jump. Yeah, I, I think uh, Matt's Mustang was like 30 uh, with driver and all the right. you know fluids right. and gear and all that shit. Mm-hmm. I think he was in like the 36, 37, maybe closer. Anyways, but then the heaviest car was uh, Adams. Um, Model 3, and that was like 4,000 pounds, I think. Yeah. So, big weight. But uh, next up, weight distribution. I would assume EVs are much more balanced. So, uh, generally speaking, the average EV is 47.9% rear, 52.1% front, and uh, gas-powered cars are 44.9% rear, 55.1% front, which I'm sure is uh, largely due to the huge number of front-wheel drive transversely mounted engine vehicles that we have on the road today. Well, even even a front-wheel drive, rear drive, or front engine rear-wheel drive car, you know, the weight's still going to be shifted yeah. way towards the front. My Omni is hilariously nose-heavy. Oh, I'm sure. There's no weight back there at all. No. None. Wow. So, um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 EVs are, are really easy to balance, to weight balance. Plus, you usually, don't they put the batteries, like, below where you sit? Yeah, they're super low center it's like of exactly gravity where you and want stuff it. like that. Yeah, that's another, like, big um, design feature of those vehicles is that they're really low center of gravities and stuff like that. I so. tried to do that with the Z when I added ballast because, like, I didn't have time to, like, detune it. This is bad. I found so I have a I have a scale uh printout for my Omni. Uh it is sixty two point four percent front. Oh <laughs> what you would have to do to corner balance that. Uh actually so um Is it is it corner balance well? So Cross percentage left front to right rear is forty nine point six, fifty point three to so left front to that's, that's pretty well good. That's so like about as cross, good as you're gonna it's get. fucking that's as spot good as you're on, gonna right? get. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, uh, right and left percentage, yeah, it's 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 not that bad. Like so, the left front is seven hundred and fifty four pounds. Yep. And the right front is seven eighteen. The transmission's on the driver's side, so it, that is kind of yeah. And your front rear is like that is what it is. You can't yeah. You can't. There's not much you, you can can't do, shift right. that weight right. And then right rear to left rear is is very close too. I mean the um, it's just it's just is what it is, yeah. you know. But um, beyond that, it was set up really well. I mean, it clearly had I been. Would imagine. It clearly had been on scales and had been corner balanced yeah uh it's just very nose heavy huh yeah that, 
That would make sense. Like, disgusting. <laughs> that was heavy. <laughs> so uh, that was with me in it, too. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. So car weighed 2357 with me in it. Holy shit, that's a light car. And that's a comp- full interior with a cage. <laughs> Not like a hardcore cage. No. But it's a, it's a, a four-point It's a four point bolt-in cage. It's only four-point? I thought it was six-point. No. Yes. Yes, it's, it is. It should be six. six it should it's be, a six-point. Six. You're right. Yeah. It's a six-point. It yeah, it'll be, be yeah, S- the SCCA legal. Yep. Yeah. I don't know that I would wheel-to-wheel with it uh, if, no. if it was legal in a group, but um, yeah, it's it's... In that it's car, more for it's, stiffness because yeah, that car, not, like uh, if if you jacked it up without that cage in it, I don't know that you could open or close a door because <laughs> I bet it would twist that bad. That's bad. But with it jacked up with that cage in it, it's fine. Oh yeah, I'm you sure. can you can just it closes with no effort. Yep. So it it's remarkably stiffer because of it. That's what you want, which is what it's for. So. Yeah. Now this the Z with ballast now is thirty. Well, it's like close like thirty. 3260 is what it's sitting at as it, like not full tank of gas right now. Yeah. 3206 is my cop weight. So the last one here, uh, this one's kind of interesting. Uh, fresh in Robbie's mind, skid pad. God, I suck at skid pad. Skid pad that grip so and bad. 70 to zero mile per hour braking. Uh, so standard grip on the EV is 0.83 G's versus non EVs average of 0.87. So we got them by a little bit, but I think that again, this is largely because you've got a lot, a lot more vehicles that are performing. There's just so many more vehicles to give you a decent average. That and what the hell, what the hell tires are they using? Yeah. Like that's, (laughs) yeah, that's a big, that's a big deal. Yeah. Cause like, you know, that 0.87 average came from everything from Priuses to Silverados to performance pack Mustangs, yeah, yeah. you know, to GT2 RSs. Like, it's everything over yeah. the last 12 years. Huh. So, it's a, and then most EVs outside of Teslas are on like hot garbage tires because they're trying to, <laughs> they're using those minimal roll resistance tires. Yeah. So, and then braking distance, uh, non EVs win by just a hair, 169 feet to 174 feet. Yeah. Well, which I mean, which negligible. would make, which would make sense. Cause your, your, your weights are almost identical. Right. For, for averages. I mean, right. So I yeah. don't know. There were some interesting things in there. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you can tell, yeah, there's still a, a difference between the two, but I, I think that it'll be home. Besides the range, I think everything else will be fairly I think, negligible. Like when you look at them from a performance standpoint, like purely performance standpoint, like we're going to track days and autocrosses, we're using cars in the way that we like to use them. Yep. There's, there's a you know a very negligible difference, for sure. So, for and sure. I, you know, I, I used to be super against this whole electric electrical revolution. Uh, I'm quickly swinging. I'm definitely not. Way. I'm definitely not swinging the other way because. It's gonna be hard to convince the mechanical guy, right? Because like I just don't get excited. I get levers and pulleys are my thing, uh, resistors and ohms, and that, yeah. that's not my thing. Yeah, I get that, but uh, I mean, but, I just like seeing cars go fast. Oh yeah, and I think that there's a huge opportunity to uh, do some incredible things with with cars. I will completely agree with that. Yeah, just because just because it doesn't. You know, trick my trigger. It's it's right. I I totally agree on like a, a passion standpoint. Like, you know, because I love my Omni for for not for reasons that don't make sense on paper. Right. And those those all the things that I love about my Omni and that I loved about my S10 and stuff like that. Those things don't exist in an EV car for the most part. Right. Um. And so that's going to be hard to get used to. Uh, or maybe they're just different. I don't know. You know, I haven't driven one. Right. So I guess maybe it's just maybe they're just different uh idiosyncrasies almost that that I'm going to end up loving about them too. I don't know. We'll see. Probably. But from like a pure performance standpoint, I'm excited to see what other people will do with them. Yes. So how fast we can go like in time attack and stuff like that. Um I even talked to Jabay about this a little bit a, a long time ago. I think it was even in the group chat that you're in with him and I as well. Um but EVs are express are expressly 
outlawed in GLTC. Yes. And the reason was that he was worried about the way that they produce speed is so radically different from it. that it's, it just makes it hard to wheel the wheel with them. And, and so I'm, I'm interested to see how sanctioning bodies try and bridge that gap because for a while they're not going to be able to just have electric cars race by themselves and internal combustion cars race by themselves because no. there's not going to be enough numbers. No, you, you won't be able to separate them for long. You like right now there's no data. That's the biggest thing. Cause like even right. cause Adam bought that, um, that model three and we're like, and we're like, well, you, according to the rules, you're in production D. I was like, but the whole point of you having this is, is great because now we can use your car as a baseline. So we can start getting real data on how we could yep. include electric cars in our power to weight ratios. Right. So, Right now, we're just sticking with, you know, we use horsepower and weight and modifiers. And so that's what we're stuck with. Even if they, the way they produce power is different and it might not read the same on a dyno. So it's just like, well, this is a place to start. Right. So, but it's hard, you know, and I, I don't disagree with Adam's decision of not allowing them, but it's hard to get the data when they can't race. Yeah. They need them. They at least need so to pull the data from anyone that shows up in time attack or you know anything yeah, that you can and get they hands are. on. They have an EV class, and and I know that they're. If anybody can figure it out, it's probably that group of people for so. sure, for sure. So, but it'll be interesting. So, I don't know. We just got to figure out the range thing, man. Yes, that's yes, the biggest do. problem for me is the range. Yeah, and so. I and I, I think for most people, it won't. Uh, you know, I don't think it affects. Like I think people. From a day to day um, commuter thing, it's, it really doesn't matter. And I think some people are finally getting around that. Yeah. But like on a. I still know, just. I hate the idea of like, uh, oh, I'm going to go visit my parents this weekend. I got to rent a car. Right. That that would be the problem. Or something like Like I just hate or, that. Or you got to you gotta plan. You know, right. You got to go around wherever you're going to find but if a you charger. Have, if to, you live, you know, most people who. Most of us live in a two car family. You, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or if you're like us, you have four or five. Well, I mean, just like uh, cars you would drive places. Oh. You're, yeah, you, yeah. We're, you know, both of us are two car families. Yes. Uh, there's no reason that one of them couldn't be like an efficient EV that we use, that one of us uses as a daily commuter, and we use it to go to the grocery store, and we use it to go to the movies and and whatever we do. But then when we're going to visit our parents or see our friends or go on a you know, some sort of road trip, then you just don't use that one. You right. use the other one. And that's perfectly reasonable. I mean, that's, that's kind of why, you know, I, I got the truck. Right. I, because if I had to use the truck all the time, like, if we, like if we were doing road trips or whatever, to, well, right. driving to Colorado without pulling a trailer. It's like, well, right. of course we're taking the edge. So when you go visit her parents in Missouri, what do you drive? The edge or the truck? Oh, it's always the edge. If it's both of us. Always. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. They don't live that far into the sticks. That we need to take well, a I didn't, truck. I didn't. Know. <laughs> Some people are just like, I'm driving my fucking truck. Run, no, run, 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 run. no. If it's if it's long miles and there's no reason, is the edge remarkably better on gas? Not remarkably, because like I I I drew because she had to work last weekend when I went and saw my family. So like, yep. there was a really awesome tailwind coming up from Zoo City. So I, was, I just had the cruise set and I yeah. was averaging 25 miles to the gallon. Hell yeah! In the Silverado, and I also have the um, AFM Delete. So it's always V8 all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. And I still got 25 miles to the gallon. Hell yeah. <laughs> so. You know how much, you know how mad that makes me? <laughs> With my fucking blazer? You've never gotten 25 miles. I ever. couldn't get 25 miles an hour with a tailwind down a hill for a brief period of time. Nope. It was just, for an average of 50 miles, I was averaging 25 miles for like the whole trip. That shit's out of control. It was, I, I'm curious what it would have been had it kept. Had it gone to the that, four cylinders. That four three from the Blazer is literally the worst junk. engine GM ever made. It's junk. It it gets V eight V eight of the time gas mileage makes four cylinder of the time power. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like nowadays, four cylinders make V eight power and still get four cylinder gas mileage because of turbocharging. Yeah. But in the early two thousands, they made a hundred horsepower. <laughs> But at least I got 30 miles to the gallon, like my Cavalier, you know, it makes yeah. like 120 maybe on a good day, like at the crank, Yep. you know, but, <laughs> but at least it gets 30 miles to the gallon. Yeah. No, that's not what the Blazer does. 
It's such garbage. That sucks. Yeah, it's awful. It's been a very like a reasonably reliable car, especially considering the fact that it's over two hundred and fifty thousand miles on it now. That's pretty it's good. It's been relatively reliable to me. Like, yeah, I've put two alternators on it, but it, it is what it is. That, that, and honestly, I blame that on the second alternator. I blame as much on it being some junky alternator, junky alternator as anything. Um, and then the transmission, yeah, those transmissions are known to be not reliable, and that's fine. We can work around that. But, like, it, it's it been decent to me. We've put a lot of miles on it. That's a, 250 is a lot of miles. Yeah, it's got a fuckload of miles on it. Especially, yeah, for that for that car, that or that Blazer, that's that's a lot of miles. I know, I've seen a ton of people who have three to 500K on those. Jeez. That's crazy. Yeah. So, like, reliability-wise, they nailed it. But other than that, <laughs> it's hot garbage. <laughs> The hottest of garbage. Yeah. Oh well. So. Anyways, this uh, talking about hot garbage and electrical vehicles <laughs> was brought to you by Booney, uh, factfabrication dot com. Um, our topic is presented by Petrobox. I'm wearing a Petrobox shirt. You're wearing a Petrobox shirt. We did not plan this. You showed up, and I'm like, I'm not changing. So we are wearing our race car shirts. They have the this is a Petrobox shirt that I got in my Petrobox. Um, if you want your Petrobox, go to MyPetrobox.com. Use the code 10 tenths. No, sorry. That's my Apex Pro. Um, <laughs> use the code TTP15 and get 15% off your first box or anything that's in the store. Um, rumor has it that if you get a box moving forward, there could potentially be Eagle Grit <laughs> in it <laughs> because somebody doesn't shut the hell up about it. <laughs> so you're welcome. But if you want to figure out how awesome Eagle Grit is, Maybe you should use the code TTP15 and get a box moving forward. Hell yeah. Wink, wink. Um, otherwise, you get, normally you get car care products or tools or shirts or all of the above or magazines. Like It's it's always something different, and it's always something fun. I was actually going through um, – I was trying to seat some ti- beads on some tires today, and I was trying to find something flammable. And I was going through my, my stash of like – Oh, no. Where's this going? I just had, Randy wasn't home, so I needed some help. Okay. So then I had to bring him back to Randy when he was home, so we could see the right. But what what petrol box item did you use that was flammable? No, nothing. But I was going. Oh. Through, so I was going through all of my like chemicals of like car care products uh-huh. or like uh, car cleaning products or whatever, yep. and I'm like going through. I was like, I got this from Petrobox. I got this. From, like it's all the like great cleaning products, yeah, but, like none of them, none of which are flammable. But uh, enough anyway. Yeah. So like what I was when I was looking for something else, but I was just like kind of was, it was just funny. How, like, I was going through my shelf. I'm like. I have all this awesome car care products because of Petrobox. It's honestly it's stuff I would have never bought, but I'm glad I have that I use the crap out of. But I don't, like Jack's Wax uh, wheel cleaners. Yeah, I use. I'm almost out already. Yeah, because brake dust. Um, Weird. Yeah, and then uh, uh, the Jay Leno shampoo, car shampoo. I'm almost out of that just in time to, for last month's box, which came with more car shampoo. I've heard great things about the Jay Leno stuff. I haven't used it's it good. yet. It's good stuff. I really like it. So I'm hoping this new new bottle. It's like a it change. The foam is a different color. I'm hoping it's uh, equally good. No, I've been I've been super impressed with all the products that I've gotten for car yeah, care products. Absolutely. Stuff that I, I probably wouldn't have bought. I would have just got whatever at the store. Yep. But now I like our uh, Adams Adams glass cleaner. Oh Jesus! It's the best. That stuff. It's so good. I used to be such a like foaming glass cleaner snob. Uh, moonshine. I uh, well. So when I worked at the dealership in high school. We had this, it was GM branded foaming glass cleaner. It came in an aerosol can. Yep. The best. Yeah. I thought. I, I thought so too. I'd always, I would always buy the moonshine, the blue bottle, yep. the foaming. Yep. I would always buy that. I was such a snob about that stuff. Yep. Then Adam, then, we, then Petrobox kept sending me Adam's glass cleaner. I so will use good. it. It's great. Yeah. It's super good. It's great. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, if you want to be talking about the car care products or shirts that uh, you got in your Petrobox, use the code TTP15, mypetrobox.com. So this week, uh, this could be interesting. Uh, we'll see if people argue with us or what about this. Uh, I was kind of thinking about some of these cars that have come out. Most of the things that I chose were cars that have come out recently, um, but it was Cars that I really strongly hated when they first came out, like visually speaking. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh my God, that's hideous. And then as time has gone, I've really softened on them or even maybe swung the polar opposite. I, when you brought this up, I, I, did, I, I picked cars that I completely swung 180 on. Right. Because so, the, the, the immediately jumped to my mind of like cars um, that I hated. 
uh, through the through the the time that we have done this podcast, which has been a surprisingly large period of time now, there's been a lot of vehicles that we've been like, what the fuck? Uh-huh. And if there's a handful of them, I still feel that way. The new BMW grill is atrocious, and I don't think I'm ever going to soften on that. Um, but as we'll talk about it here, there's some GM products that I've really f- don't feel nearly as strongly about as I used to. Yep, yep. Um, and uh, I just, I, I don't know if it's so much that I... I, I don't know. It's it's just an interesting um, thought in human psychology, maybe. For sure. Like, I don't know if... Am I being, like, Stockholm syndrome into thinking that these are good now? Or... Probably, yeah. Or, or <laughs> yeah, like, probably. What's, what's... Like, I don't know why. I just... it's And it's interesting uh, to me. But, yeah. So, that's basically what this is. I brought a couple vehicles. Robbie brought a couple vehicles. I'm sure that there might be one or two in here that Robbie will argue with me about. It's fine. I hope so, yeah. Um, I, I know some of these he really liked to begin with, especially the one that he has pulled up here, but not well, that not, you can't see yet, one. uh, that he really liked and I didn't. And now I don't feel so strongly. Yeah, there, I, there's a few on mine that you're gonna be like, "Really, you didn't like those?" Oh, I'm sure. And I think the general. But I cons- feel that's I feel that way about a lot of things you don't like, that, Robbie. I, I get that a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of things I don't like. Yeah. So I mean, I have no room to talk. But <laughs> yeah. So uh, first up, if you want to show the people, Robbie, uh, the I chose this one being specifically the Lexus LS, but the Lexus grill in general, uh, the Gillette Razor. If you will, but you you picked the the oh god, I did not pick the performance one. No, but you that you picked the four door. Um, so mostly, I just wanted to talk car. about the grill. I I like the I like the little two door. Right, obviously, but you were always like the grill isn't that bad. I have I was very consistent that you guys were very dramatic on the grill, and it's not right. it's not as bad as you think it is. And you, you were, were you, you were right. You were you were. <laughs> You were very strong, on dude. Your I, I hated it so much, and then the the performance versions came out, like the ISF yeah, or whatever it is, or the LC five hundred. I think it was. I don't remember which one it is. Like, I think I it's the ISF. Like, but yeah, that man, they I look love, fucking I good. And then, like, now all of a sudden, when you look at the like the LC five hundred, you go, man, that's a really good looking car. And then you go back and you look at their more standard ones, you are like. Fuck, I kind of have to like that now, too. Yep. LC, not LS. Oh, my bad. Sorry, I had LS on the brain. So, weird. Weird. So Yeah, the LC500. The LC500 looks good. Yes, it does. I get I get really excited when I see these cars. Because, I mean, they're not super common. No. But when you, this one, then there's, I can't, what's, what's the lower version? The IS, IF? <sighs> Dude, I don't. I mean, it's a hybrid. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I never I think even, that's like their halo car. Okay, so that's like the top of the that's the top of the line right there. So I don't know if they still make like Lexus IFs or Lexus ISs or well, I don't know, man. Um, I still don't like that no, grill. That's not what I wanted. I still don't like that grill on the crossovers because it's just too big at that point. Yeah, I would I would agree. It gets worse as it goes to the bigger vehicles, the crossovers. Right. But like on on the small two door coupes, it. Cause I don't know. The, I can't. I don't know the names of the Lexuses. Right, I just know that right. I li- I I like what I see. Right. So when I see it, I get excited. Right. But like, there's a, there's one of the I think but, there's a couple in Des Moines that I, I I will go out of my way and notice. Like, Jess, look. What? No, look. It's the it's the Lexus I like. <laughs> yeah. I so Michael and I were like adamantly against this. Yes. Like super strongly against this. I, I never. I I think if I remember correctly, I wasn't. I didn't say it was like the best looking grill in the no, world. No, but you always were like, you guys just you're 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 dramatic, right? Yeah, I'm sure someone's listening. Like, oh, actually, Roby said, "Fuck them all." I'm waiting for E Man to like, well, an episode, whatever. Fuck the fans. <laughs> Rob E Man's been like going through old episodes. Yeah, this is like episode four. Yeah, like, and he's like calling us out on stuff that we've swung on. Like, dude, like, that was five fucking years ago. Biologically speaking, you're a new person every seven years. <laughs> so I'm a new person. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me, man? So, but yeah, uh, I. So point for me for being right. I feel less strongly against them. Uh, I think they look really good on on their like sporty cars. Yeah, they're totally acceptable on their bigger cars. Uh, and 
I will I will give Robbie the the credit that he was right and I was sort of wrong. <laughs> so, oh god, I'm so happy. I'm I'm so happy that yeah. you, you, you I'm so happy they even just said that. That's, regardless of the context, this, yeah. you said that no, you No, I I knew that this would really make you happy. So, uh, what other cars? Do you want me, we want to go back and forth? No, nah, let's just go through my list, then we'll go through your list because mine's relatively. Uh, oh, like, I did. I did know you softened on this one. So I was super. This is the the new Supra, right? Yeah. So I was pretty against this. I didn't enjoy it at all. I felt like the concept cars looked way better um, than what they gave me, which is pretty standard. But I was like super not okay with the Supra. Uh, if I had the money, I'd fucking own one of these. Really, dude, I love them now. <laughs> what? I uh, you what, put what, a little bit. What's it about? Like what? 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 Well, what so you, you put like a little bit of it? put a bit of, little a few little things on them. Okay, you know some wheels. Wheels really bring them around. Uh, the it factory helps. wheels just don't really do much for me. No, uh, no matter what they are, but like. Um, you know, you go to you go to grid lights, you go to car shows, you go to whatever, and there's somebody with like a really well fitting set of Volks or whatever. Like, obviously, they're crazy expensive wheels and tires, yeah, like, but um, but they look so good, and you lower them an inch or two, and and man, really? And have you seen one in person? Like, yeah, have you yeah. had time to like look at one in person? I looked at Jackie Dings a lot, and I've looked at Jackie's is a little hard because it's a time attack car because it's so radically. I mean, despite I mean, you can look at it and go, oh yeah, that's a, a Supra. Supra, but there's so much on that car that's not factory, which is fair. But I've um, also seen a, a decent number either Grid Life or other like events because I mean yeah. they're they're around. Yeah, you start to the, see the, them. There I was, mean, I, I see I probably see one a week at I least. Think there was a couple. Was there two? I want, to, I want to say there was two at one lap. I'm, I'm picturing the blue one right now. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've really, I've you've re- got, like full 180 degree on these. I've softened like super hard, like a little. I've, I, phrasing. I would, um, I've softened <laughs> maybe a little. I'm, I'm definitely not hard. I, I'm, I'm, oh, I would <laughs> so own one of these in a heartbeat, dude. They're great. No, like I, I love it. I still, actually, if anything, I've, I actually like the. I feel like I like the old Supra even less lately. Like I'm just like I'm not into any of them. I didn't know that you could like the old one less than you already did. I I I don't know. I I used to really like it, and then as I've like gotten older, and I think it's mostly because of the price and the people that own them. Yeah, but like it's just I I care so much less about the Supra in general than I ever did, and then I've I've never the thought I'm, of buying one of these has never crossed my mind. I mean, yeah. obviously, I'm not like price shopping no but there's two of them sitting in front of the toyota dealership i drive by on my way to and from work every day and they just fantasize about buying and driving and like i would freaking own one of those in a heartbeat oh no if i had the money there's no way i really like them uh i think they did a really good job with it yeah bmw really did the only thing that i don't like or that i'm i've still like super strongly not for is the, like the weird square opening in the center bottom of the grill yeah, like the, the the nose, the middle of the middle of so it's basically the front lower portion of the uh, front bumper is split into three sections, and the middle section looks strangely out of place with the rest of it. It looks like those really ugly Formula One cars from like what ten years ago. Yeah, where, where it had like the wing, be, yeah, the wing below. Where yeah, it, yeah, it, yep. that's what it looks like. Yep, the nose was really high up in the air. Yeah, and it like yeah, it looks like a like a. Oh, like a bullhead fish. Like you're just yeah. real ugly as shit. Yeah, it that's, yeah, it looks like So that. that's it's kind of that's kind of a letdown. Um but otherwise I really, really, really like them. I'm sure I'd enjoy driving them. I don't I don't question that one bit. I think it I I, I assume these are wonderful cars to drive. JB was had glowing reviews of it when he was driving his. But look what's he doing now? Not those. C eights. So I'm just saying money for dollar for dollar. You put those two cars in I front mean, of me. Okay, never, so, ever is that car going home with me. I'm never so driving get, that. All right, we're not, we're not going to get into JB's <laughs> life, but that, that I don't disagree with. Uh, the C8 is is a better car in nearly every way. Yes, uh, in my mind, I, I, at least, I, uh, I think it's better looking for sure. I, I think it's probably a better performing car. I would, I would, you definitely get more for your dollar. Yes. Uh, like I'll give you that. Don't get me yeah, wrong, yeah. but I still really, really like the Supra. 
And, and maybe that's why I can't get over it. Like if it it's was, not a good value. If it was forty five thousand, yeah, instead of seventy, yeah, I think my feelings would change a little. I thought I, I thought I, for I still, a minute that this was going to be the FRS replacement, and that it was going to be like down in the thirties. Oh, as like I a, wish like the two liter turbo one, like a three fifty Z, like a real here. stripped out, cheap thirty ish thousand dollar one, and then like that's some real dollar per performance value at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. And then, then you have this. It is too much money. Yeah. If, and then you have like the up spec right. carbon fiber, high performance, right. everything. Inline v, Set, yeah. or inline turbo six cylinder. Like, yeah, okay. And then that one's 70. Yeah. And that makes sense. Sure. But yes, it's too much money. I'll give you that. Yeah. But like, I, I was trying to base this purely on aesthetics and I freaking love those cars oh, now. There's too, there's, there's too much I would have to change to make it what I want. I think that the silhouette yeah. would be a great place to start. But like, yeah. in my opinion, I'm throwing the front bumper away. I'm throwing basically everything away and starting fresh with a with a bot. Like the silhouette's great. I, I could do a lot with that, I think, but I'm I'm gonna spend a fortune to make it more plain. That's fair. <laughs> to make it what I want it to look like. Yeah. I like I kinda like the the over design like the type R. You know, it's it's a lot there's a lot going on yep. and I kinda like that. It's kinda loud. It's, it's, it's very shouty. I can see that. You're not gonna miss it in traffic. Especially when I buy mine in yellow. Yeah, it's a race car, of course you buy it in yellow. So all right. Next you picked. Oh ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Yeah. So uh the the twenty twenty Silverado. Um this one specifically so the front ends of the the 2500s and the 1500s are different. Um, I don't. I see a 2500 literally every single day for like many, many hours a day because I drive one at work, and um, I don't hate it. <laughs> and I've also come to the realization that every like as long as I've been old enough to care, so basically since high school, uh, every time that GM has come out or that Chevy has come out with a new generation of pickup, I fucking hated it. Yeah, and two or three years in, I'm just like, yeah, okay, yeah. whatever, it's fine. I I still think they peaked with front end design right around 2015. Yeah, I'll give and you then that. They, like, I I like mine 2018. I like that. Yeah, but I I'm 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 not as far on the spectrum as Michael was, where he felt like we needed to fire everyone in the design apart, well, department. That's, that's the next one on this list uh, that he was very adamantly against. Yeah, that I feel very differently. About I, I do. I do think that the the 2020, uh, yeah, the 2020s. I think they changed them a little bit for 2021. I haven't really seen very many. I I don't know that I could say. Yep, that's a 2021. I haven't noticed I, them. I enough. don't think I could either. I, I There's think probably like six on the road because nobody can get new vehicles. Right on the now. the 1500s, I could tell you the difference between the the first ones and then the ones that are coming out now. Right, yeah. I could tell you that difference. I, could, I mean, I can't describe it, but I could right. I could point to two different pictures and tell you which right. one's which. Um, but I'm. This is kind of like that. Same with the Supra. I've, I've softened a little, but I still think it's ugly. I I don't hate it. Uh, the GMC. This one's for sure Stockholm syndrome for you, though. Yeah, probably because you realize how great the truck is. The truck and you is can, so and good, you can, yeah. and you can look right past how ugly the front I end love is. That truck. I, I preach to the choir, man. I love my uh, mine. A couple like uh, probably two weeks ago, uh, I was in my boss's office talking to him about some stuff like midday, which I'm not normally at the office midday. Yeah, very rarely am I there at that time, um, and that's when all of the like office employees I don't like our executive staff that I never see because they work like eight to three and then they're fucking gone. Right, it's a great hours to work. I'm yeah, just, I don't, just letting you know. I mean, I'm sure they are. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm like. I, Sometimes I work 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. Does that count? That's not good hours. <laughs> Those are not the fun ones. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, um, he was in the, or he was in, he stopped by my boss's office and, and he was giving me shit about, like, oh, have you scratched the truck yet? And like, no. Like, I'm super protective of I it. I love I was my like, truck. <laughs> I was like, you don't understand. Like, I don't even let other people drive it. Like, uh, when, like next week when I'm gone for good life, the, the truck will be locked up. And the keys will be in, in Michigan. <laughs> no, I'm not taking them with me because if it needs moved or whatever, that's one thing. Uh, but the truck will be locked up and the keys will be in my boss's desk. And he knows that I do not take kindly to other people in that vehicle because they do not treat it the way it should be treated because it's brand new and it's really it's expensive. Nice. And it's, uh, I mean, as weird as it is, like it's a 
big deal to me that I have that vehicle. Because yeah. it's the only new thing I've ever had, work or per- well, even, personal. Well, even you said not just for you personally, but like your company didn't just go out and buy new trucks for everybody. No. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> I have the only 2020 vehicle in our entire fleet. And we have, I'll bet we have nearly, if not upwards of 100 vehicles. Yeah. Like licensed road vehicles. And I have the only 2020. They made the right choice by buying it for you, so or letting you be the one I'm to drive. Super it. protective <laughs> of it. So yes, the, there is probably some Stockholm syndrome in that. Um, I because I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah, and I, I can completely agree. If if I'm driving a 2020 pickup, it's not because yeah. I think it's the best looking truck. No, it's because I'm not I think it's, it's the best, the best available. looking. But I do think that it's less ugly than I thought it was when it first came out. Yeah, I'm going to give you Stockholm Syndrome, but I will completely agree with you. That's a wonderful truck. The GMCs are way better. Oh, yeah. The 2020 GMCs look so much better than the 2020 <laughs> Silverados. Yep. No, any of them are better than the the, the the original one that came out in the 1500s. that had like that wraparound bumper thing yeah. or uh, fender thing. Yeah. That was that was real bad. Yeah. These are a little better. Yeah. And the, yeah, the GMCs are way better. But yeah, I, yeah, I think they went too far with the weird design and but i mean it's a it's a it's a flat front end of a pickup i mean what can you really do yeah i mean you could otherwise you're basically just being the, a derivative of the original design that the, you had the, the, last line, 20 the years. belt line of that truck could be six inches shorter and it wouldn't like god the structure's so tall <clears throat> that motor is way down in there when you open even up my, the even hood mine is like so if you're looking at the front end of this truck there's the the where the hood meets the top of the grill and then they've got one row of the grill and then there's the Chevy emblem and then the rest of the grill underneath it. Yep. The hood could be where the Chevy emblem starts. Yes. And the and the engine would still be six to eight inches below the top the bottom of the hood. Yep. At least. Uh there's this There's so much room under there. There's this girl I follow on Instagram that was doing like a model uh, shoot in front of one of these pickups like it's not jacked up it's right. just it's just a nice pickup yeah. to go along with the other cars that they had and she's fuck i don't know like five five right she's <laughs> a model yeah and she's uh barely like over like like and people That's are coming like worst, they're like how big is that truck and she's like it's just a, it's just a, like i'm just that small I was like no 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 the truck is just that big and tall yeah you're a five five that's a normal human yeah, size you're an average height <laughs> yeah it's out of control. but it was ridiculous how small she looked just because that truck looks massive or oh, is so big. massive. They're so big. And it has the worst turning radius of any vehicle I've ever driven. Uh, I think mine's mine's compounded by the fact that the tires are one aspect ratio too big. Oh. So it rubs on the fender wall, uh, liner or the, the mud flaps. Yeah. So I'll, I, I consciously try not to take at lock because then I'm right. sitting there like <laughs> dragging the bumper. No, the f- so, <laughs> so at lock... You've you've been on lots of country gravel roads. Yeah, of course. You know, you can easily turn around in an intersection. Oh yeah. No. No. You have to three point an intersection <laughs> with that with my truck. So it's a crew cab long box. Yeah. And uh I'd be curious if mine could. It has the worst turning radius of anything I've ever driven in my life. Yeah, I don't think mine's quite that bad cuz I when I test drove it I did the a U turn kind of like that, and yeah, it would have been about equivalent to that. No, size. I get, I get, I have to be really mindful of where I'm putting that vehicle because uh, there's a real possibility I can't get it back out again. Yeah, parking lots suck. And I mind. won't pull into a lot of small parking lots. I no, just off. pull up next to them and and throw on my strobes and and hazards and just leave the truck on the road. Oh yeah, no, any like Walmart, any any parking lot, I three point turn it every time. Yeah, it's just it's just not. I just can't pull into a spot. It's not an option. No. It's just too long. Yep. But so it's worth it to have the long box. Oh. Just just so we're clear. Absolutely. I'll take that trade Eighth every day. That is life. Yep. Uh mine's only what's the what's the middle one? Oh, you have the middle one. Okay. So that's I don't know. Mine's I not eight, mine's not eight is. foot. Eight it's foot like, bed is life though. Because I think five point four is standard or the the smaller one. Yeah, and then, and then I think six, a six, some, and then six and a half, or six whatever. and a half might be. Yeah, and That's then not, eight. I have, I have the 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 bigger one, but not the not the full one. Right. But yeah, it's great. So. It's almost double the capacity what the Avalanche was. Oh, I'm sure because no the, the Avalanche had that extra plastic yeah, crap. There's a it bunch was, of stuff that yeah. took up space in there, yep. and it yeah, was smaller. Absolutely. To be in there. So next, uh, the 2020 Camaro. I hated this thing. Michael was the ready. Twenty. 
I, that's a 2020. I know, but I, I like this one the best. I didn't like it. Really? I didn't like it. Michael was ready to fire everybody to in the fire. design department. So the 2019 is worse. Yes. Uh, and then they facelifted this because everybody was mad about it. How do you remember that? Um, and I still don't like the 19. It's still pretty atrocious. But the 2020, I I was not super thrilled with still. I was like, okay, you guys made it better, but it's still pretty bad. And it doesn't look as good as the Mustang. No, I still don't think it looks as good as the Mustang. Well, actually, the base models and the and the SS, but I, I really like the ZL1 bumper. And the 1LE does, cars it, it look, look really look good. good. It looks good. But like the bases, um, I would take a Mustang, but I really like... The up spec Camaros probably it better enough that I might take them over yep. a Mustang. But yeah, uh, this car I felt pretty strongly against, and I don't feel that way anymore. I this this one's not on my list, but of new vehicles, mm-hmm. this is the car that I've probably softened the most on. Yeah, uh, after driving uh, Jess's dad's more, uh-huh. I've gotten over what years his. I want to say it's a few years old. Isn't this like a 15? No, I think it's an 18. 18. Okay. I want to say, I want to say it's an 18. It still okay. only has like 2,500 miles on it, which is oh, crazy. Christ. Absolutely crazy. Drive that poor I, thing. I've driven it the most <laughs> oh and I never gosh. drive it. Oh my gosh. Um, it's not worth anything, man. Just that, put some miles. Except on. that it probably will be. That's the thing. Like uh, he, he's not an investment guy. Like he's not buying it as an investment. He just doesn't drive it. It just sits at the lake Weird. and he drives it when he's at the lake. But even then, he's usually busy with other stuff. Weird. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, but he wanted, he bought it, and but that that I, that's the Camaro I've driven the most, and it's not as bad as the older ones, and the windshield is still not great. Yeah. But once you get used to it, you know where your blind spots are. You get, and it, I mean, those are very capable cars. It's, so good on track. They've proven it for being these big heavy pigs. They are so fast yeah. and so good. Yeah, absolutely. So don't. I mean. Obviously, I think they're awful in orange. I hate them in orange. Well, it's the I mean, ugliest color in car. Um, I yeah. mean, the only place those should be is in walls. Yeah, just or, or corner stations. Yeah. Um, tire walls. You know, whatever. Yeah, wherever. Just uh, park them against something hard. Yeah. Or, or at just, speed. Or just have three cylinders running. Yeah. Forget the rest. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the Camaro is for sure the, the car that I've softened the most on. That's a new car that I was very vocal about. Yeah. Um, we all were. We were all super against it. Yep. And I don't feel nearly as strongly about it as I did before. I would own that. I could, s- like, if I had the money and the deal and a deal, a good deal came along, and you know, I was in the market. Like, that would be a vehicle I would own. I wouldn't shy away from it. It wouldn't be at the top of my list. I can think of many that would go before. I don't it. know that I'd keep it. Yeah, but I might own it for a little while if I felt like it was a good deal. Nope i've I've grown to really enjoy driving the eighteen. Oh my God, if, I'm, if it's not an eighteen, I sound like a moron. But I, I'm pretty sure it's an eighteen. Yeah. Um, but even that was no like, it's going to know Robbie. That's true. Yeah. It's an 18, it's obviously an 18. it's an 18 SS, but the problem is it's a convertible commit to it. Robbie. Yeah, Nobody 18, knows any different. I, uh, I don't like the convertible still. Well, I mean, just so we're clear, I don't like that. I hard top, hard top for life. Yeah. Um, I saw a convertible ZL one yesterday in uh, West Des Moines and I was like, I'm really sad that they make that. That's gross. I don't like it at all. It's the license plate said max toy on it. Like Max's toy or no, like MAC. Like Mac, it's so it's Mac's toy. Yeah, that's weird. I'm like, and he was like some muscled out, bald, middle aged guy, right? Okay. And he was driving around like, like it was like he was a 19 year old kid in a fart canned Honda Civic. That's I mean, that's except how you drive he's them. in a 650 horsepower ZL1 with the top down, and Why like, even make that? and like really, you know, like blaring 80s hair metal. Well, at least he's playing music you like. Music. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm not arguing with the music, but the whole ensemble is not a look I'm after. No, no. Like I, I enjoy the music with my windows rolled up at a reasonable volume, so that the rest of the people don't realize I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I don't really. I'm embarrassed to like it, but I like it. It's fine. I, I like what I like, and I'm not embarrassed by it. But I don't play it loud enough for everybody to hear. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not that guy. Right. <laughs> this is my music. This is my time. If I'm singing Bye Bye Bye, it's to myself, God damn it. I don't want to have everybody else. Sing. I'm not singing it to you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, But that that's not what he was after. And it was just not a look I'm trying to achieve. I'm not a hey, look at me guy. Right. Top down, music up. That's what he was doing in his ZL1. That's so and weird. I was that's, just like really that's, sad. That, that car shouldn't exist. It's, no. It shouldn't. 
Six hundred a six hundred and fifty horsepower convertible is not really No, I'm with you on that one. I mean I'm not I'm not a fan of the new Corvette convertibles. Like that that idea. I don't like that. Yeah. I like I like the target top idea. I that's, do love that's, a good target. That's where I stop. Target. No yeah. no convertible. Yeah, T tops for life. I'll go with that. It should it's it's a Corvette, so it should like I know they've been doing targets for a while, but like GM should lean into it and do T tops and say if they made a T top Camaro, you know how bitching that would be. It'd be pretty good. <sighs> just get rid, just get rid of the convertibles, targets, and T tops. A T top convertible or a T top Camaro would be ace. Pretty good. That'd Bill, Bill, and I were talking about that on our many miles behind the windshield yeah, together. Right. Yeah. And like looking, around, I was like, this, this would be so easy to turn into a targa. Like just. You know, or like you know, it's so easy to have the thing off as a target. It's great, yeah. but the convertible is like I don't. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing how that's any better. No, I agree. So actually, I think his is a target. Now that you mention it, that I mention it, right? I think you can take the thing off and put it because you can put it where the golf bag is. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Or the no, it's in the front. It goes in the front. Okay. So yeah, his is a target. Now that I now that I think about it, targets are great. Targets are cool. I like T tops better because I'm an '80s guy. Yeah. Like. So if if Z, pre, previously mentioned ZL1 guy would have been in a T-top Camaro with a mullet and 80s hair metal. Yeah. Like, that I would have supported fully. Like a modern fully. day IROC. Yes. <laughs> I would have supported that fully. There would I would have been like, hell yeah. Like I had a devil horned him for sure. Like, hell yeah, dude. You live your life just the way you're doing it. You are doing it right, sir. Right. But muscled out bald guy in his Camaro or in his convertible, I was not into that life decision. Nope. Nope. Not working for me. So. All and right. then I think I have one more. You do. I think I the last one. Uh, I just want to preface a little, a few <laughs> things before we say what it is, right? So this particular vehicle is probably universally accepted as being one of the most ugly vehicles ever made. Yes. It's like the first thing you think of when you think of ugly vehicles. It's one of the, like if you type in on Google, ugly car, yeah. this pops up. It's probably uh, image search number one. If, if it's not number one, it's for sure top it's, line. It's in the top line for sure. Um, and I'm not saying that I have decided it's a good looking vehicle. What I am saying is that we have made so many ugly crossover SUVs now that it doesn't look as bad as it did when it was made. Yeah, the, yeah, it's you've had it. You've had we've, twenty years to look at it. We've brought the bar so low that it's it's basically average now. Yeah. Well, the problem is, yeah, I mean, we haven't even said what it is yet. Nope. Uh, but the problem is, the new crossovers all look the same. Yes. They're, and there's nothing fun about them. No. They're just crossovers uh-huh. with like the rounded edges and right. This so, is this is the Mazda crossover. This is the Toyota crossover. You just you don't really know what it's called, just like the Porsche. You just buy it. You don't you don't right. care. So this is the Pontiac Aztec. I still, I, I still think it's a very ugly car. It is not a good looking vehicle. Now I purposely picked this particular picture. This is one. Uh, it's the orange color. Um, and uh, then no, it's not. Okay, sorry. It's brown. Thank you. My bad. I don't even know that anybody except like three people who listen to this understand that joke. Everyone understands. I don't know. Plus, the, it, plus they, that's what they did on uh, on uh, the Grand Tour because he had that sunburst orange oh, Aston Martin, oh, and they refused okay. to call it orange. orange. It was always okay, brown. So apparently, it's brown. Uh, this this Aztec is brown. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, but I I chose this one because it was the first one I found um, that did not have the god awful plastic gray cladding. Oh yeah, that made it way worse. Yes. GM really loved that. My Cavaliers factory bumpers from the from my high school Cavalier, yep, not yep. the one I currently own, was those gray plastic bumpers. <sighs> those were the worst. It was the worst. And then so you could get the Aztec and it had that gray like I don't know. Like the Avalanche? Yeah, the, the avalanche, original avalanche. Yeah, the old Avalanche Ugh. had a bunch of it. It's not color matched. It looked terrible. And it faded um, in the sun so bad. Yeah, it was really it was a really poor choice. I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, I, I understand on the Cavalier it was like a price saving measure. I'm sure, but like, but it was a style cue on most other cars. Yeah, and like it, on the Aztec and the Avalanche, it was it was purposefully put there as like a design feature. Yeah. So this is one that does not have that and looks remarkably better because of it. Yeah, I think a couple of, a couple of reasons I think that I've softened on this car. 
probably because I've seen it so many times. It's like yeah. I'm so used to it. Yeah. Um, and because it's it's when you, know, you compare it to everything else, it's different. Yep. Um, so I think the split headlights were really controversial at the time, and they're still ugly today. Right, but there's a lot more vehicles now that have two piece split headlights, including all the new pickups. Right, and so. It's a design feature that you're used to seeing more often, and so it's not nearly as upsetting as it used to be. Yes. Well, and then Lamborghini took this idea and rounded it out, and, a and then bit. and then added a bunch of money and a lot of really. They just took like just made it better, and like here's the Urus, and you're like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's it's the Aztec, yeah, but you know for two hundred thousand dollars more, it's got a. Monster motor in it. Yeah. The mobs. But, but the problem is, everyone, like, we all accept the Urus as a good looking. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not good looking, but like, people like the Urus. It's acceptable. Yeah. People like the Urus. Yeah. Uh, but to me, it's like, it's not that remarkably different. No. It's, it's, it's just a 200,000, 300, 500,000. I don't know how much it costs. It's all the money. <laughs> all the money. How much do you want to spend on it? It's a $300,000 Aztec. I mean, yeah. it's, it's great. Don't get me wrong. But, so. um, and then uh, my, the thing that I think really brought around for me is that the guy that was like the lead design on this designed the C7 and knocked it out of the park. So I yeah. think I think it was like if you would have just let the guy do his thing, the Aztec would have been a hit. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm sure the marketing and a bunch of other management got involved and was like, okay, here's your design, and we're just gonna shit all over it, and then we're gonna sell it as the Aztec. Then with the C7, they're like, okay, you do you, and they he did. Oh, he so did. I still love the C7. Yeah. Love it. Um, yeah, Aztec. I'm not saying it's a good-looking vehicle, so don't like come at me with your <laughs> pitchforks and your torches. But what I'm saying is that we've brought our design bar so low that it's not it's it's a perfectly reasonable car in traffic now. Yeah, you don't you don't notice it. Right. I always think of Breaking Bad, so I mean it's just that kind of brought it around for me. I never watched that. What? That's what People are going to come, come for you with pitchforks because of that. That's fine. Bring it. <laughs> you know, we start listing off the TV shows that everyone thinks I needed to watch. I haven't yet. All of them, probably. Stranger Things. No, I haven't seen it. Uh, what was that? Tiger Joe? Oh, oh um, uh, Tiger King. Tiger King. Tiger King. Didn't watch that. It, uh, let me like. Did you ever watch like Jerry Springer or Maury Povich? No. It's that. Uh, yeah, I don't. It's I don't it's know it's, it's it's some. Outback, not Outback, it's a like backwoods Oklahoma trash. I, I mean, it's, I talked to Dalton enough. It's I don't need any more of that in my life. Oh, fuck. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that was uh, from that side of the table. <laughs> Just so we're clear. That side of the table. Uh, Slipping old Patreon. But it was, yeah, it was, <clears throat> it was like watching a train wreck. Yeah. It was great. I'm sure. Don't get me wrong. I just don't have time I binged the whole thing. <laughs> So, I don't know. There's a bunch of them. I did American Horror Story. That one seems to be really popular. I haven't I didn't seen watch that one yet. Crap. I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah. It's on the list. Though. I do I, so, I do like horror movies, so I will watch that eventually, probably. So, what do you got, Robbie? You got a couple there, I know. I got... Um, oh, those are yours. Those are mine, yep. Uh, no particular order. Uh, the first one is a Nissan Hardbody. So, like the 1995 Nissan Hardbody. Yep. The uh, original KA. Yeah. Vehicle. People that start 20 swap them all the time. That's oh. why everyone calls the K a truck motors because that's what it came in. Exactly. So, uh, growing up, I, I never understood like mini trucks. And like, I kind of came around to the idea with the, the generation after this, like the 2000 ish Toyota Tacoma. I always yeah. kind of liked that. Yeah. And then they had the Tacoma X Runner. And for some reason, like, it was like, you know, it's this riced out, yeah. lowered uh, yep. Tacoma. Yep. I was like, I, hey, I was, I was, all, about, one, I I was all about it. <laughs> I saw one a couple of times in the same place. I don't remember where now, but like, you don't see them very often, but they're pretty rare. I fucking love it. Yeah. But I, I was in on that, but like anything like that with the square bodies, anything older. Right. I so I don't was, really like, like, you know, the vehicle I revert to for mini trucks the s10 yep. i don't like the first gen square s10 as much like, as like, i like the, the second like the gen 80s that i own so, yeah the yeah. 80s and, and early 90s and then they switched uh like 94 to the generation that i own i always and i, like I always like way that. more yeah i always like the 95 and newer which is kind of the general rule for everything for right. me 95 my, was that year but like my shifted. dad likes the old ones better i've very, i've softened on the square bodied mini truck 
design. And I think it's just because I've I've really come around to the idea of really liking or wanting a small truck. So, like, I'll see, like, an 84, uh, is 84? Like, just an older S10. You need a farm truck for sure. Yeah, or, like, an older Nissan Hardbody or Tacoma. Like, just the really small, square, you know, maybe, you know, lowered a few inches. Like, I'm not saying slammed, but it just doesn't have to be tall. Like, mine's two inches lower than a base model. I would like that. And, but, like, but the Nissan Hardbody sticks out to me because, like, I... Five years ago, never would have considered it. Right. Now I'm thinking, like, that'd be a great, great daily. And it fits into your stable because it's would Nissan. I love it. And I, you put an LS in it? I wouldn't even bother. No, I don't I don't want that. I just, you want I, the KA? I, I just want something that runs. Like, it's just, just a nice, hard body, What about, like, a truck. VQ? That sounds like a lot of work. But if it's already done, absolutely. I mean, I can see you not wanting a V8 in there, but a VQ would be pretty sweet. Not bad. I'd be all right with the VQ. But, so... I don't know. I just completely 180 on, on I, small square trucks. I could not be more happy about that statement. Yeah. Well, yeah, because obviously I am I love the mini truck life, right? Yes, you do. And so the fact that you're in on the mini truck thing, which I don't know that you always have been. Not necessarily. No. Uh, it makes me happy. No, like I, ne- I never would have considered buying an old S10 or an old right. like pre-95, right. any of them. Right. And now it's like, well... That'd be a nice. That'd be a nice truck to just drive. God, it, if it's not a rusted out hunk of junk, they're so expensive now. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. You, you can get them for like two grand, but yeah, you're gonna spend like four grand making it nice. Yeah, and by nice, I mean acceptable, drivable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's next? Um. Oh, Jesus Christ! It's the Suzuki X90. <laughs> okay. I can't explain to you how much I want a Suzuki X90. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. This is like, so remember how Michael could not believe that you wanted like a Corvair van or a pickup truck? Yeah. Or an Econo line, an old Econo line, the yeah. flat nose? The flat nose. I feel the same way about you wanting this. This would be so much fun. I'm sure it would be a riot. <laughs> An X90. Oh, my You're, God. Dude, I couldn't tell you the last time I've seen an, a Suzuki X90. They're worth like... In the wild. They're literally worth their weight in gold because, well, one, they don't weigh anything. And two, <laughs> they don't exist. Like, you just can't... Find, like, I think I think oh I saw one for God. sale for like $7,500. Oh, my which is God. absurd. <laughs> That's like via cross territory, and those are way cooler. Oh, no. I'd rather have this. But, like, it's it's like... A tiny little Geo Metro, but it's, it's got... It's almost like a lifted K car, almost. I mean, they're bigger than that, but not much. Not much. They're tiny. Yeah. Tiny, tiny. Yeah. But I bet they get like 50 miles to the gallon. Oh, it's I'm like sure. A, it's like a just, moped, man. They just rip. Are, are they Are they four-wheel drive? I'm assuming at least some of them are. Okay, that's fair. I couldn't tell you. I just, for some reason, like... Wow. When you brought this up, wow. These four these cars are what jumped to my mind of like cars wow. that in the past, no way. That now, shocks me. I would have so much fun driving an X90. I want that to happen. Like I don't know that I don't know how I can describe how much I want that to happen. There's a guy at work with a Suzuki Swift that he just like it's it's literally his work car. Hell he yeah. drives it to and from work. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I could get behind that. Yeah. Because I bet it costs like $11. Yeah. I'll bet it. <laughs> I bet his insurance company doesn't even charge him for it. No. <laughs> I'll never file a claim. I promise. <laughs> no, just, I just need to make sure that if some if I hit somebody else, that they're covered. That's like. I, I, it's the polar opposite. Because like I have the, the, it's not a huge truck, but it's, it's a big truck. That yeah. I, and I don't want to drive that every day. I prefer not to drive that every day. I do because it's a compromise. Right. It ideally, is what it is. Yep. Ideally, I wouldn't want to do that. Right. But if I could get an IQ, like a Scion IQ, oh, which of course we all love. Oh, God. Which is why I can't talk about, like why I didn't pick that because everyone knows I love that. Yeah. But I could get something like a Suzuki X90, which That's is hilarious. equally small. That's hilarious. It weighs like 1,500 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Gosh. I don't even know what to say. I would turn so many heads, and people would be like, what the fuck is that guy driving? And yeah. it would be great. Yeah. I can't explain to you why beyond that. I, I don't I'm, know. I don't know why. I'm I just, speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even... I don't know, man. And it's a target top. Uh, it is a or target. is it a T-top? It looks like it actually there might be a T I there, think it's a T-top. Which is even better. But it's got... Uh, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> it's a little... Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think you measure the engine in cc's. Oh, for sure. Like 100 or 1500 cc. <laughs> probably. It's probably like a three cylinder. Yeah, I think so. It would be great. Jesus. I would have so much fun in that. Jesus. Jess would never ride in it. You don't think so? No. She would hate it. She's no fun. She would hate it. She wants a Jeep Wrangler in the worst way. And That's I, just a cooler, I, more funky, fresh Jeep Wrangler. If I brought this home and said, here's your Jeep Wrangler, she'd go and get divorce papers the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but I would love it. I would have so much fun. It might be worth it. To get a divorce? No, I don't think so. That no? sounds expensive. Oh, okay. For no other reason than it's expensive, though. Oh, yeah. No. That's fair. Yeah. Who can afford a divorce? <laughs> Nobody. It's ridiculous. <laughs> don't tell her I said that. <laughs> Good thing she doesn't listen to this show. That's true. Nobody listens no to this show. No way, Robbie. No way, Robbie. <laughs> this is the one that I know people would be like, dude, I can't believe. No, I'm not surprised you didn't like it. I'm shocked that you're in on this. El Camino. No way. I used to hate. Who are you? I used to hate the El Camino. Oh, my gosh. Um, I think I can blame you for this. I'm fine with that. I Yeah, you know, growing up, never saw the attraction. Never understood it. I thought it was an ugly, stupid car. As an adult, an educated adult. Yeah. God I dude, get it. Right you are. I fucking get it. Dude, you can't tell me that if they made a Camaro El Camino. It would sell like hotcakes. That it wouldn't be the best selling car they make. It would be great today. I think the I think what really pushed me towards it was the modern day Ute modifications. Yeah. And the Utes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Like Smith with the Charger? Yeah, I'm in on those. Yeah. Even the cars I don't like, I'm still in. Yeah. Um, the Volkswagens? Yeah, like a, like a Jetta he makes, Ute. He makes a new Beetle kit now. Oh, weird. It's not good, <laughs> but it's kind of funny. I I always liked the Scion XB pickups. Yeah, I don't think that's a kit. I think that's no, just people I, doing it. Just hacking it, it up. But it is cool. I like that. I'm in on that. Yeah, I've seen people do it without ETTs, too. I'm not in on that. They just take the hatch off and turn it into a pickup bed area. I don't like that. It's dumb. No, that's weird. Yeah. It's too, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You're right. This, but the XB would work. It does. It works well. Um, But the the Camino, I, I'm in on the Camino. I, dude, I, who are you? I don't Robbie? know. I've, I've, I've clearly changed. I think I don't. COVID was hard on you, wasn't it? Yeah. I think, I feel like I've been away too long. No, no, this is good. This is good. People, no, you, you should be so, happy. You've, Growth and change, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we used to say the show's about growth and change, and and and, and these these aren't just cars I've softened on. These are full one eighties. <sighs> like these are like ten years ago. If you would have said, "Hey, I'll sell you this El Camino for a, a super cheap deal," I would have said, "No, sir, I'm not driving that." <laughs> now, if you're oh like, "Here's gosh. a here's an almost fair deal," I'm in. I want it. <laughs> Take my money. I don't even care if it has paperwork. Just go. I want it. My dad's trying to sell his. I can't afford it. <laughs> it's a complete restoration. Like restored? Like a no, it needs. Oh. It is it does is he a, want, does he want an LS swap two forty? He would love it. I, you know. <laughs> I mean, he'd owe you a lot of cash on, on your end. I'm okay with that. But uh I don't Does he have an enclosed trailer he's trying to sell? We could package this thing. <laughs> A Camino, let me a, make a, a couple, close trailer. Let me make a couple phone calls because <laughs> he actually wants a bigger enclosed trailer. What's he got? A twenty. Oh, I want bigger. I know at least a twenty-four. Yeah, that's where he's at. He yeah. wants a twenty-four. A twenty-eight so he, seems a little too. He big, wants but. room for a golf cart and the car. I get that, and he doesn't have room for that right now. Yeah, I get that. I want. I want enough. For, I want like enough room in the front to have like a cot and like some storage. Yeah, and then the car. Yeah, that's what I want. Twenty-four. Yeah. We had to get real creative to get two juniors in a drag car and a yeah, twenty foot yeah, close cool. trailer. I mean that's that's how big the the flatbed I have is. We would 20. we would back the we'd roll the juniors in backwards, yep. and then we would lift them up in the air, <laughs> and then we'd I don't remember how we did it, but we suspended them in the air somehow, and then we nosed the race car underneath them. Oh my gosh! Yikes! Yeah, it was a deal. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten a bigger trailer sooner. <laughs> I yeah, I never understood why. Like we we why would you put up with that? <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> well, and then that's kind of part, that was, you know, a, probably a, a decent part of the reason why we ended up selling the drag car is because, you know, it's super, that'd be super. We were focused on the, on the juniors and it wasn't, it was too, too inconvenient to try and race that many vehicles at once. And, yeah. I get, I could see you doing that for like a weekend or two. And then you're like, you know what? I don't care what it costs. We're not doing this again. <laughs> well, it was the right size for like when we went to swap meets and stuff like that. Yeah, um, that makes sense. And so, yeah, I don't know, but yeah. Cause I mean, you don't want to be lugging a 28 or a, a, yeah. or whatever. Especially when we had an RV behind or in front of it. So, yeah. Oh yeah. El Camino. Um, gosh, I can't. I'd, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to say I'm no to so, a good deal on an El Camino. I'm shocked. I, I think I might be more speechless than I was on the X90. I, th- I thought for sure you'd say that I'm offended that you didn't like it to begin with. That's where I thought you were going to go with that. Well, I mean, yeah, but not surprised. Okay. That's fair. I'm supremely shocked it's, it's, that you're in on the El Camino. It's like the perfect daily driver. Like, man, if I would have... Maybe this is a game we could do at some point where we, like, think of some cars that we either really like or really don't like that are kind of out of character and then see if the other one can guess Ooh. which way we swing on it. But if you'd have posted that up and you'd have said, am I in or out on this? I for sure would have said you're out. Oh. There was no way that you were in on the El Camino. Oh, I'm, I'm in on the, I'm in on the Camino. All right. hmm. Can you hear me in both ears? Yes. Okay. It's just my headphones. Then. Okay. Sorry. I was, it was freaking out. I'm only hearing it in my right ear right oh, now. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't both of us. I think I can hear you in both ears. Okay. <laughs> All right. El Camino. Good. Uh, this oh, one. Jesus Christ. This one's not quite as far of a swing, but I felt like I should mention it. Okay. Um, get like 10 years ago, someone would have said like, look at that air cooled Porsche, like an, you know, like an eight late eighties. Yeah. Or, you know, nine elevens. Honestly, I have no idea what year this is. It's, Neither do I. Yeah. Uh, this is no longer the Porsche podcast. I don't have a clue, dude. I, um, let's just, it's, it's 86. Just I think it. it's a, I'm not even going to say it. You don't, because you don't want to be wrong. I get it. I want to say it's like a, like a, I don't even know, man. I'm oh. saying out of it. Okay. Well, let's just. It's an air-cooled Porsche. It's like is, one of the last gens of air-cooled Porsche. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is just as an example. Um, I, I'm like late eighties. Yeah. You know, Porsche 911. Yeah, if if someone would have said, "Hey, what do you think of my, you know, awesome sports car?" I'm like, oh, "It's it, whatever. It's just it's fine." As I've gotten older, I've definitely softened on the idea of an air cooled Porsche. I'm not out shopping for any right now. Yeah, but I, I like them. <sighs> I was right. It's a nine six four. Okay, <laughs> there's no way I would have known that. For some reason, I felt like nine six four was the wrong numbers, but it's right. Nine six four. Yeah. So for those who are trying to figure it out, uh, I like these. They're cool looking. Yep. They're super expensive nowadays. Oh god, yeah, that's absurd. But uh, they're they're very good looking cars. See, I, I never thought they were very good looking cars. I thought they were fine. That's fair. I thought I, like I was like eh, it's 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 a sporty beetle. Eh, it's whatever. See, but as I've gotten older, I've I've, I've kind of come around to like again the older mechanical like no 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 so this is this is exactly what i was going to say if i had to pick a porsche 911 for robbie veerhout it would be one of those as a turbo model yeah because it's fast and it's uh like it makes enough power to keep up with modern day cars yep but uh it will reach out and slap you across the face with no warning whatsoever i want that and it earned the title of widowmaker for a reason yep yeah i'm in on that I and like I figured that. that that would be like, you know, for the same reason that I know you love early Vipers. Yep. So that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, I was never like anti Porsche. Right. Or 911s or whatever, but it was definitely not a. Not a thing you would even It wasn't on consider. my wall. It wasn't on my wall. Right. You know? But I know Michael did have something like this on his wall. Yeah. I think that's it for me. That's all I had for All right. That's all I got then. Okay. <laughs> So. Um, I'm curious what uh, some of the people in the group have. Yeah, for... our groups, partially because I've been so busy, but uh, that I haven't really been able to post stuff either lately. But it's been kind of quiet lately. So I've, if you've I've... got cars that you feel uh, that you've kind of flipped around on, post them up in the group because yeah, I want to know. Because I'm sure there's ones that I forgot I hated because now I'm just used to them. Yep. So post them up. Let's see them. No, I, I, I figured there'd be a bunch that I'm not thinking of. Because I, I tried to, like, pick fun ones like the X90 yeah. um, that you wouldn't think of. But right. There's 
Plenty. See, I'm sure. I, I specifically was thinking new cars. Yeah, we didn't talk about it, which is no, why we never do. We shouldn't. That's better that way. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, one sentence to describe the show, and then we both just run in different directions. Well, originally <laughs> I wasn't even going to tell you. I was just going to show up, and we were just going to do mine. So oh, selfish. And then I decided, ah, eh, we'll see what Robbie's got too. Yeah, X nineties. Yeah. yeah, I'm super glad I did. <laughs> I I have different thoughts on you than I did when I got here. I get that a lot. I, I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, our news is presented by Apex Pro. And as you heard last week, we have exciting Gen 2 stuff coming. Um, also, because we have Gen 2 stuff coming, we have a new uh, deal. So if you use the code 10 tenths, you get the code or get uh, you buy the model Gen 2 and you get a window mount. If you get those two together, you get 10% off your entire order. So Just you got to buy the Gen 2 unit. Yep. Add the window mount. Yep. Use our code. Yes. 10% off. Boom. Your brand new units. Um, I don't even think it's on the store yet. And Andrew and I were texting just the other day trying to figure out the details of the of the Gen 2 deal through yeah. the podcast. Yeah. So I've seen a lot of questions about it this week. Uh, yeah. People are excited. They should be. I'm, I'm really excited. I, th- I think a lot of the improvements, uh, things that I, I didn't know I wanted, like the... Because I was curious how they were going to do the predictive lap timer. Yeah. Because I, I, I thought they had added. I thought it was going to be on your phone. That? Well, you, I mean, they have that already. But that's, right. I suppose they do if you have lap timer plus. But I, I thought they were going to add like a display that showed numbers. Yeah. And I was kind of like, well, that kind of gets away from what you were doing. So like, well, then when you described it last week as like the green to red based on like iRacing, like how iRacing does it, uh-huh. my excitement was not faked. Uh, that was that was genuine. I'm, I'm genuinely interested. <laughs> You're in so this. nerdy about it. I love it so much. Yeah, the look on your face is so. I funny love it. To me. I think it's gonna be so much fun. Oh gosh. Because I I on some of the higher uh, class cars, they they go away from that. Like uh-huh. like on some of the series, like um, uh, the MX5 Cup or whatever. Um, if you're not doing practice, that stuff goes away. And so, I like it. I like when I have that stuff because I know I'm doing well. Right. Or better. Not well. I'm not definitely not doing well. Right. But I'm doing better than what I was. That's fair. So, uh, so like that'll be that'll be fun. And having the lights do cool stuff when I when I do well is or better. Um is exciting. But yeah, again, ten tenths. Uh get the gen two and the window mount, ten percent off. Uh Apex And we got news, Adam. We haven't done news in so long. No, we just always said fuck the news. We're so busy. Yeah, and we've and we've had a and bunch we've of had a bunch of guests. And it's just and yeah, we'll just, it's, it's been a weird year. Yeah, so so first up, uh, the the headline doesn't really go with what you're focusing on. Yes, yeah, so our our governor signed a bill that has two things in it. One of them that I don't even want to talk about because it's the Fucking stupidest absurd. thing. Fucking it's absurd. absolutely <laughs> absurd. The other half I wanted to talk about, and it's the part that has to deal with driver's ed. So it is now a um. Previously, if I understood this correctly, uh, you were required to take driver's ed in order to get your driver's license unless you waited until you turned 18. And then if you could pass the driving, the written test, they would give you your license. Uh, yeah. But to get it at 16, you had to take driver's ed, instructionalized driver's ed. Yes. Um, which was not only classroom time, but also time with an instructor in a car. Yes. On the road. Yes. Like... Uh, like this, 20 hours of driving or something. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was it, not it was, a small amount of time. Yeah, I remember, yeah, do, it was you know, in high school. Yeah, 20 might. 10? 20 seems like a lot because we had three guys in the car. 10 that, seems more reasonable. I think maybe even five a piece. Yeah, five or 10. I, I don't know. Remember. I remember we, we did, oh, we drove we to did a bunch Falls. Yeah, we did a bunch just, of like short, like in town day. We did two or three days where we were in town. Yep. And then the last day we went farther away. Yeah. We had, he, he would let you pick. I remember because my, so my driver's ed's kind of interesting actually. Yeah. Uh, my driver's ed teacher was a BMW of America or BMW Club of America licensed instructor. That'd be good. For the racetrack. And he was not slow on a track. I bet. Um, and actually, we've, we've touched on this in the past and somebody who listens to the show and I can't remember your name now and I'm sorry uh, they emailed me about it and I think they even knew him or remembered him which right. was super cool uh, apparently he's passed away which is I, I remember looking into it after um, 
after someone emailed us about us. Um, but he, for the long trip, there was like three or four places that he would let the group in that car decide where they were going. And one of them was to go to the lakes and we went to the lakes to the cart track that they had there. Oh, nice. And one of the kids that was with me had grown up racing carts, uh, around Sheldon and Sibley. There were a couple of dirt circle track go-kart racing. Um, and he had grown up doing that and he was the whole way down there. He's talking shit to, to <laughs> the driver's ed teacher, to Mr. D, uh, about like, Oh, you know, like, i uh, there's no way you could beat me on a car. Like there's, you know, I know you do the, the road racing stuff, but it doesn't, I'm, I'm for, and you know, he was always like, you know, I, whatever, man, I'm like, he's, he kept saying like, I'm not even gonna, I'm not, I'm just here as your teacher. I'm just giving you guys a chance to have a little fun. I don't plan on participating. Right. And we got there. Spent an and, hour beating him down. He's like, Oh, yeah. it's on. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got there and like, you know, we all paid our thing and then he stands in line right behind us and, and buys his ticket in and destroyed him. Doesn't surprise me. Our teacher, all. he was so much faster. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was good. Did he cool. sit quietly on the whole ride? <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't know. It's been so long ago now, but it, I remember that. That was funny. So, that's awesome. But um, yeah, we, that's what, that was part of the, you know, in order to get your driver's license, that's what you have to do. Yep. That's what I did. Um, this new bill that we signed into law will allow parents to do that at home by themselves. So there's no class or instructor car driving time. Uh, as long as, and I think there are some like, you still have to log hours with your parent and you have to pass the driver's test that you would have yeah, had to pass yeah, either yeah, way. Yeah. But I just, this is not good enough. Well, we've, we've said it for years that so long that, in general, it's too easy. It's to too get easy. Yeah, license. in in America, and they just made it even easier to take people who clearly don't have a good gra- grasp on traffic law. Yes, and pass it on to the rest of them. Yes. No, you're you're taking people that need to be guided mm-hmm. by experts. Yeah, someone that is even if it's a weekend of training or something that's just like okay, we need to focus on. Driver etiquette and laws and yeah. all that shit. Yeah. And then you just, you're like, ah, the general public's got that. They're good. Every, every, everyone knows the laws. They all have licenses. They clearly shocking know this. It's shocking. It's absurd. To me. It is absurd. I've, I'm not going to go there because I <laughs> fucking hate our governor more than Dusty hates his senator. <laughs> yeah, I, but like, what, oh, no. Like, but who put this in front of her and then was like, yeah, let's take away that education requirement. Yeah, we don't we don't need them in classrooms. Let the parents do it. Why the fuck did it even get to the get to where it got? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know, man. Why, why does it have to be easy to get a license? I don't, know. I don't understand I, that. I don't know. I'll, I'll never get it. I'll never like. Even if they had like a, so, like the expert saying in front of me, like, well, the, statistically speaking, um, it, it, it they're not going to get any worse, like. It's still, it's still not going to make any sense to me. It's not safe. I, I don't understand why we don't make it more challenging. Like, like well, I'm as guilty of this as everybody, but people don't take driving seriously enough. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. Uh, lot, I mean, you know, on my way to, on my way here, I, I drive by all those electric signs that say how many people have died in in 2021. Yeah, in traffic accidents, and it's like it's it's around that hundred person mark. Yeah, and we're a, a relatively small state population. We average about three fifty, four hundred deaths a year on the road. Yeah. in Iowa, we don't. Um, generally speaking, I don't think we quite average one a day. No, not quite, not quite. So usually, so we're you know last year was less, obviously. Well, last year, yeah, last year was still higher than I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. I thought it'd be half. Maybe in right. less. And, and, and you know, wasn't. some of these, some of these deaths, uh, you know, I, without getting too into it, who knows like what the circumstances are. Right. Um, a lot of people die in, in weather related accidents that, yeah, they could be avoided, but you know, right. It is what it is. That's just part of living in Iowa, I guess. Um, but man, I just, I don't know why we think we need to make it easier to put not good. a 16 year old behind the wheel of a car. It's not good. Or, or or South Dakota, where they're fourteen. Yep, 
which is crazy to me. Well, you it, can get it was a, crazy to me at the time. It's still crazy now. You can get what they call a, a learner's permit or a school permit here in Iowa at 14 as long as you live a certain – I don't remember no, what the you, number is. No, you, I, I didn't live a certain number from anywhere, and I got – at 14, you can get your learner's permit. Well, so to get a school permit. Oh, to drive without a parent. To drive without a parent, but you can only drive your route from your house to your school. Yes. And you had to live a certain distance away from the school to get the school permit. Yes. At 14. At 14. Or you can just get your moped and you can drive anywhere you want. That was also crazy to me too, is that you could do that. You could get your learner's permit and then again, drive with your parents for two years before you were required to do your driver's education. Right. I always thought that that should have came first. The driver's, driver's ed, ed. The driver's ed should have came before your learner's permit. Even like the and then a harder or more or more focused driver's ed for, would have been what you took again. I could even get my head around splitting the class and the driving section up, having class and then two years of learner. Yep. And then you do the driving section with the instructor to prove that you're ready to get your license yes. at the end of that two years. Yes. I will say wholeheartedly at 16, probably not the best idea to hand me a license. <laughs> no, let's be real not. here. Yeah, N- that's like, fair. What's the first thing you did when you got your license? You drove like an asshole. Yeah, I did. I mean, how many people do you know that like their parents bought a car with their first car with every intention of it being wrapped around a telephone pole or put in a ditch or crash into a tree? That's weird that that's an assumption that you're going to write. Yeah, like write a car off. Yeah. Like most people just assume that you're going to write a car off yeah. for most kids, yeah. which is insane. It is. It absolutely is. Well, like just in general, like, like, like you, we nonchalantly, like we brag about, oh, I got, you know, I had my license for what? A week and a half before I got my first ticket. I didn't, by the way, it was years. Um, or like I got my first OWI at whatever, <laughs> like People fucking brag about that. Like uh, it's this like it's this badge of honor. Like, yeah. oh I, I got three hundred tickets and you know, it's like one of my coworkers, we don't take it seriously enough. One of my coworkers recently moved here from Wisconsin and they really don't take that oh, seriously rude. enough. What the heck? It's on silent. <laughs> it's on do not disturb. Oh, uh, they disturbed. Oh, I know why, because he's on my favorites list, so he rings through. <laughs> I forgot about that loophole. <laughs> That basically doesn't even make sense to turn on silence then. <laughs> like the people that will call yeah, you. Yeah, because the only people that call me are the people on my frame or telemarketers, but yeah. most yep. of those don't even ring through anymore because they... Yep. But, sorry. Yeah. No, it, it's it's weird how we just assume driving is a right, and it's not. Yeah. Anyways. But, yeah, if you have a child in Iowa, you can basically just teach them, and then they can go take the test without any sort of actual class time. I, I still think that uh, street smarts. So what the SCCA does street survival. Street survival. I yeah. Street smarts. Sorry. Street, street smarts is something. It's something similar, but not. I don't the know same. who does it or what though. The, but but our local SCCA group does street survival. Street smarts is it's something. It's an it's more of a national thing, isn't it? With a with yeah. a, with a different group. But yeah, street yeah. survival is what we do locally. And I think that's an an SCCA thing. It is. I don't know. You know, obviously not. I'm sure not every region does it. But if your region does it. Highly recommend. I I mean, I can't recommend it enough. Like if you have a teenager, that is invaluable. I've talked about before. I would like to do it. I I still need to do it myself. We're not. We're too old to do it. You have to be under 18. I still need to do it. I still think it's it's valuable. Yeah. (laughs) Everything I would learn there is still valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Cause yeah, they've. Like, I'm on. I'm on the SEC board, so it's been brought up to have me like be a part of it. But of right. course, they want people to go through it, then be a part of it. So, I, oh, okay. so like, I would. I would probably have to go through it if oh, I want cool. to be an instructor or whatever. But no, I think. I think that if you have the opportunity, absolutely do it. Yeah. Have your. Have your. Like, if you're. If you. If you are going to be that parent that says, "Hey, I won't send them to to driver's ed. I'll teach them. Send them to street survival." Yeah. Do that because it, it it teaches car control and the, like they'll spray down the, the yeah they do the, the, like the a, parking lot like a wet, and the wet skid pad essentially essentially yeah it's it's even more even more valuable than what drivers ed would be it's all like car control stuff so you can teach them like the the rules and the laws and then you actually teach them how to drive a car and like if you're in a no shit moment here's how you should handle it yeah and so you maybe That's won't wrap stuff it around that you've never gotten drivers ed right I mean and I wouldn't even I don't even know. 
at least locally, our driver's ed was done through our school. Yep. Ours and was. I don't even know that I would expect, or I don't even know that I would put the expectation of our school system to provide that level of. The, the problem is it's a part-time gig for someone that's. All, like full, a full time teacher, so like, usually, so it's it's like your basketball coach or just a, a you know a teacher that has the summers off. Well, now they're teaching driver's ed, right? You know, they don't. I don't think they had any. Mine extra, happened but. to be a, a person who was qualified above and beyond. I would assume ours was not, but yeah, most of the time <laughs> I would. Not. I would assume that I I know one was for sure just the basketball coach. Yeah, like, and I don't think well, he, and he was one of three or four. Yeah, and and I, the rest of them were not him, and he was not. None of them are car people either. Like it was, right. it was, wasn't like they had an interest in cars. Right. Mine was a my specific teacher in that year was a was a different story. Yes, and and most don't get that. No. Anyways, moving on. So, uh, next up, sim racing, Gran Turismo in specific, is now an official Olympic sport. So the Olympics are um, embracing esports. Yeah, I knew that because I think they had some, uh, like, uh, not, not controller based, but like you know, console based yep. games. Yep, I'm sure PC based. Doing too. like um, Call of Duty and uh, yeah. what are some other tournaments? Uh, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. Some of those first not, person shooter we're tournaments. Not those gamers. I am sometimes, but not not in like <laughs> not seriously not like that. that. Yeah, I like to play by myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, exactly. I play games that are not online. Yeah, like Skyrim or Far Cry. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, so the Olympics have always shied away from motorsports because uh, Olympics is, is supposed to be an exhibition of man and motorsport. Well, I mean, man <laughs> as, in, as in human, right? And yes. motorsports is, is not that. It adds a mechanical element. Right. Yeah. Uh, and they talk about like it being too hard to uh, regulate fairness and stuff like that. Which I don't disagree with. Um, yeah. There's a lot of sanctioning bodies that are not very good at it. Yeah, and and, and, and already, it, you know. and you can, if you want to stay within the spirit of the Olympics, I I can totally I can see that. Right? Yeah, I don't. I don't know that the Olympics needed motorsports. I I would agree. I, the, I, I, or I, maybe I said, that maybe the other way around. I don't know that motorsports needs the Olympics. I said the same thing about the X Games too when they did rally and stuff too. I was like. Yeah, it didn't. It to me, it felt like it was forced. Like it didn't. Yeah, like it's a like weird. freestyle motocross made sense. But like once you started adding rally races, it was like, well, it's yeah, not, it's not that's not in the spirit of X Games, in my right. opinion. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. But uh, with the advent of being acceptive of esports, yep. that means they can start to be accepting of uh, sim racing. And so they got together with the FIA, and they have a sanctioned deal. Uh, they're using Gran Turismo Sport. Yes. Um. Which seems to be like the international uh, standard. iRacing seems is like lower key. It might be better, but it's not nearly as yeah. uh, name recognized. Not yeah, as mainstream. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna. They wouldn't. You know, in the other it's not gonna take iRacing. I think they would do this or potentially Forza or Forza's not Forza's Forza's this side of arcade to me. Like yeah. It's not. It's not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't look at it. motorsports. Like, pretty good. Yes, but obviously the horizon stuff is different. Yeah, and I, I think Gran Turismo is, is always kind of focused on being a sim. Yeah. So. Yep. So, uh, I think this is cool. Yeah. I just. It's amazing. To, it's amazing to me how how quickly the rise of sim racing has been in the last say three years. Yeah, it's like gone up exponentially. Like it's, it's insane. It's, it's crazy. Like you said, uh, your your longtime friend Josh has almost just decided that this is that's the path he's going to focus on in motorsports. Yeah, yeah. No, he was all about like because he, he was the one that like got me into cars in general. Like yeah. we, you know, we built the two forty together. Yep. And he had his own cars he was working on, and then yeah. like as he moved on and and just kind of like stopped working on the car itself. I mean. He tinker here and there. It's just like it wasn't a priority. And then he's got yeah. in the last year. It's like sim, that like that is what, that is what he is doing, and he's gotten pretty damn good at it from what I've seen. That's so cool. And so I mean, if you, I mean, if you want to follow him on Instagram, he's getting pretty serious about like the Instagram stuff he's posting, like what he's doing. He's doing some other stuff. Like he's got a 
I, th- I actually do want to have him on the show to talk about it, but like he wants, he's think he's doing like an endurance race later this year and like all the proceeds go to like, um, the MS research. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people do that. We've, I've talked about it a handful of times with other podcast hosts. Yep. The biggest thing is that we haven't really figured out how to do it without being together. Yeah. And I think he's doing the, like I, I haven't looked at it specifically cause he's asked me to be a part of it. And, uh, I think that they're still figuring out the details, but it sounds like it's like being hosted by someone to do all for everybody, kind of, right. you know, like maybe through iRacing or something, right. so we could all, they could all do it. Um, but I don't know if you can like do virtual driver changes without being on location with each that other. Was, that was my question when I asked him. I that was, was like, always the thing we never really figured out when I've talked, because there's this has been brought up you know, privately with me a handful of times with multiple different podcasts that have come and gone and still exist and stuff yep, like yep. that that I've interacted with. Um, and... Um, that was always, that's always the question is like, do we have to be on site? Like, do we have to be together? I was, yeah, otherwise you're going to have to be like, like somebody like, who's, who's like, I understand. <laughs> I understand that like we could take three of us and go and race against three of them. Right. But could we, uh, operate as a team together as six of us against somebody else? Cause I don't want to do a 24 hour race with three sim race with three people. I just iron man it. Just do it by yourself. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> That sounds terrible. I'll do what I have to, man. That sounds terrible. I, I haven't really been done. I did the other day. I, I did. I played for. I did like two races or whatever. Yeah. Again. And it's just I don't have time in the summer. Right. But so, but I think it's cool. Uh, just more proof that that this is like a real thing now. Yep. I mean, yeah. You watch television. Like uh, some of the off ESPN channels will have these tournaments. Yeah. It, it, it's being taken a lot more seriously. Yeah. I think that existing motorsports bodies should embrace this because this is this is the best way to get young kids into racing and then wanting to move into real life. That or even just following the pro levels. That like if, too. If, 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 if Formula One wants to be more household yeah. uh, name, like doing the Netflix series was a very smart choice from a I marketing can't believe- standpoint. Like my boss, who is not a car guy in any way, shape, or form, yep. watched the Netflix series. Uh huh. And he watched every episode of all three seasons, and he loved it. Yep. Yep. It was. It was. Who it was ever, huge. Whoever came up with that idea and pitched it and got it through and got it approved, whatever his bonus was, wasn't big enough. It's crazy. I can't believe the reach that that got outside of motorsports. Yes. It is, it is probably the single-handedly, single-handedly probably the m- smartest marketing move Formula One has done that I can think In of. Decades, maybe ever. <laughs> realistically, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, but the same same thing with like if if, if um, and any motorsports wants to get more followers, yeah, you start pushing stuff like this in front of them, like yeah. like we you know, you know the the Olympics presented by. You know, IMSA and and you know all these other and you get to race races as these actual real cars and from this actual real series and like see people kind of learn about it and then they start watching the real thing. Yeah. Or participating. In or the real participating. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because watching always is is that's one of the things to- that Jabe talks about. Why he started Grid Life is because he wanted to show club racing uh, and racing in general to uh, younger crowds because he wants it to exist. When he's old. Yes. And the only way to make that happen is to keep younger people pumping into it. Absolutely. Uh, and so they wanted to put it in front of a group of people that may not have been introduced to it previously. And and, and make it obtainable. And, and make it fun. Yes. Yeah. So, like it, I mean, I've, I've said that for how long now? It's like I'm super excited to be a part of GLTC because I have a... I'm in a group chat with all of the drivers, like nearly all of them. All of them. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and it's and it, it it's if you want your phone to never stop ringing, <laughs> that's a way to do it because they always so there's somebody talking on that group chat I'm all sure. day every day. I'm sure. Um, but it, it it puts you, it's it's no longer a me versus you thing. It's it's all of us as one team racing. So like I mean yeah yeah of course you want to win and you want to do well, but you're also not like saying like. No, this is our club. You stay out, and and I think that the way they've embraced that as like a you know this this is our you know, everyone come attitude, yeah. and yeah. It's, it's 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 only doing do wonderful things for the sport, and and you know bring it to the Olympics and, and getting it in front of people, and showing that if you want to be an elite level driver on an east 
eats uh, sport level, you know, that's obtainable too. Yeah. I mean, all you need is a console and, a, and, a, and you know, you don't even need a, a, an actual pedals and, and, and wheel. You could just do the controller if you wanted. Yeah. Much more obtainable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on. Last but least. Least? Probably. Uh, Rolls-Royce <laughs> is now doing coach-built custom cars. Uh, which was hugely popular many, 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 like many, many decades 30s, ago. 30s? Like 20s? 100 years ago, almost. Yeah, uh, and I I think we even talked about it on the podcast. I know I've talked about it with Michael in the past. I was shocked that this isn't more of a thing now because there's so many people in this world that have way too fucking much money. It seems that the rich get richer. And oh, there's no absurd. seams about it, Robbie. <laughs> there's no seams about That's it. That's fair. The rich are getting richer. Uh, and they seem to like to spend their money on stupid shit. So a one-off custom-built car. By um, Rolls-Royce? Yep. That well, looks like a yacht? Yeah, it's an ugly car. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, let's scroll down. But it's kind of interesting. It's different. But yes, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I, 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 don't I know love the, the idea of coach-built cars, though. I completely agree. If you can afford it, it's it's super cool because you'll have a one of one car. I always thought that that's what Tesla should focus on from a business model was selling their skateboard to coach builders. Oh, because Tesla yeah. has like the Model S and the Model X, and I think maybe even the Model Three are all built on the same architecture. I, th- I think and you just right. add battery packs and, and engines accordingly, and then you put a body on it. Yeah, and like they should sell that shit. Then let somebody build on top of it. And then you put whatever body you want on it. Yeah. That would be smart. Coach built. That would be cool. That'd be our, yeah. That is like one thing that ma- that's interesting about electric cars. Yeah, you could just, like like an RC car, you just slap yeah. on a new body. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, I don't know. Um, this is not what I would want for my coach built car This that Rolls Royce built here, but I love the idea. Agreed. And, I, and Bugatti's, is Bugatti? Yeah, because Bugatti's building that 101. Uh, Lenore something something yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I know what you're talking about like 19 million dollar car yeah um, whatever because I, I was testing this week or yeah. last week or whatever yep. and uh, they're doing that too it sounds like the Ferrari still or has been doing it like quietly though yeah like uh, you know I know Eric Clapton has some yep uh, that Glickenhaus guy he's got one or two that are like these crazy one off body coach built Ferrari things yep Um, and that's cool that's super neat. I love that stuff. I just think it's awesome. Yeah, because it, 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 you have someone that's like, you know, I'll pay for it, and then like, I want my ideas come to life. Here's twenty million dollars. Just make it happen. Yes. No, I, I think that if you want to be in the business of like these high end luxury, you know, special type of vehicles, yeah. you almost have to do it that way because like then your entire department is completely financed by one person. For the year, and then you can you you can allocate the funds. I'm and, sure and, that that's a very expensive car to manufacture. This Rolls Royce here, any any I'm single sure. anything that's single by itself is very expensive. But like even but it's not twenty million dollars expensive. But it, I, well, it, uh, actually, I bet it is because if you take like I guarantee you, if you take into the account of engineering hours, testing materials, you know materials that you throw away, uh, like just yeah, what it would take to actually build a car from scratch. You know, well, and what's like, uh, there's a couple examples I can think of off the top of my head. It's so like the Lexus LFA. Oh, God. You know? So expensive. They they, they, re, they redesigned that car twice. Yeah. And uh, started from scratch basically twice. Yeah. Yes. And it, by the time it was all said and done, they only made 500 cars or whatever, and they lost money. Yeah. The Veyron, same story. Yep. Or yeah. uh, like uh, the Stealth Bomber, or the, uh, I don't know if it was the Bomber or the Stealth Fighter. Uh, each each one costs two billion dollars a piece. Yeah. By the time it was all said and done. Yeah. That was. I mean, the plane itself was like sold for like sixty million or a hundred million or whatever. Right. But each plane cost the taxpayers two billion dollars <laughs> by the time it was done. So upsetting. It's 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 crazy. But yeah, when you only make ten of something or less, mm-hmm. every penny gets gets counted for. So like, if we only made one Apex Pro. Yeah. It would not cost $589. Right. <laughs> and you would not get a 10% discount. No. No. <laughs> it would be absurdly expensive. Yeah. But so. but if you have There's clearly a market. 
Yeah, and if you have fuck you money, there's too many people the, that the price don't matter. Yeah, it, there's just so much money out there right now. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not even convinced that all of it's real money. No, it's not. But while you have it, even if it's fake, fucking it. buy a coach built Rolls Royce. Why not? Right? Yeah, you could always sell it, <laughs> or someone can come and take it away from you forcibly. Either way, uh, but you know. At least it exists for the rest of us. Yeah, and that's the type of stuff like that. That's a car that you'll see in a museum. Mm-hmm. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's a. It'll get twenty miles put on it. Yeah. when they first get it, and then it'll which get is, parked, which is crazy. I mean, but. And that's really too bad. But at the same time, I kind of get it. But it, it is too bad. Yeah, art I, can be enjoyed two ways. Yes, you know, cars can be art. I totally get that, but I they do. can be I enjoyed do. two different ways and yeah. still be valuable. Yeah, I mean, if like, I had, to me, that car's worth just as much money with ten miles as it is with ten thousand miles, as long as it's well cared for in those miles, for sure. Which it's obviously going to be. Yeah, and you can always restore it. That's the thing. It's like it's not. There's only one of them. Yeah, they it's talk not, about it's like, not going to lose value. They talk about like uh, so like McLaren F ones are so valuable. Yeah, that they cannot be totaled. Wow, because they're worth so much money that no matter what you do to it. It's yeah. worth fixing it. That would make sense, and I I, I believe that. Isn't that insane? I believe that. That's crazy. It's crossed that threshold where it's it's There's, not salvageable. Like, you would literally have to burn to the ground and be nothing left. Yeah. It would have to be a melted hunk of carbon fiber and titanium. Yep. Yeah, there would, there would have to be literally no bolts left. But even then, I bet you could buy the VIN tag... And buy all brand new parts, <laughs> and have it like and re, like remanufacture everything, and have yeah. it still be cost less than what it was actually worth. Yeah, I, I, I believe, silly, I believe isn't that. It? That's that's crazy. the world we live in. Yes, but yeah, I mean, if when you only have one, I don't know why you wouldn't just drive it. I mean, it, 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 if it's if it's maintained, if it has a hundred thousand miles, it's going to sit in museum regardless. Yeah, what difference does it make? It's still worth because it's still the only one in the world. Exactly. There's still nothing else like it. Um, yeah, unless you're... Uh, but again, I, maybe you never insure it because if you have to insure $19 million for a road car, maybe it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Can you imagine? I don't know, but do you... Does it get insured? Or do, does it just like... If, if you want to legally drive it on the road, it has to have insurance. Well, yeah, but um, like I'm saying... I don't know. I don't know how that works, man. Like that's we're getting into to amounts of money that I don't even comprehend. I, yeah, I, I can I can say like if I had nineteen million dollars to spend, like just to spend on cars, I, I wouldn't build one car. I'd build like a like a race team. But like again, you know, it's different. Yeah, I'd have a lot of cars. Exactly. I'd own so many thousand dollar shit boxes. Fuck yeah, that's the dream. Not one nineteen million dollar car. Dude, I, I would. I'd rather own nineteen one million dollar cars. I'd rather own a hundred. You know of, how hard it would be to buy nineteen one million dollar cars. You would need a lot of room. Like, is there even that many cars that are valid? Oh yeah. That are, well, yeah, I suppose. Oh, yeah. yeah, you could do it. You could do it. I believe in you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're not wrong. Oh god, so, what I would do for nineteen million dollars to just yeah. piss away on cars? I don't know. There wasn't much to talk about it. I just think that the coach built thing is cool. Yeah, I like the idea. So. I think that. The car is fucking weird, though. It's so it's it's yacht themed. So like the back of it's got like it looks like, like a, wood slats, like a deck, yeah, like a like a boat. It's not, and it's a drop top, which is kind of cool. I I appreciate those as drop tops. I think that's rad. It, yeah, for what they're trying to go for here, it it works. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm in love so, with it. But it's, it's it's different. It's cool. It's it, could, weird. it could be way worse. I'll give yeah. you. Yeah, it will be. Oh yeah. Yeah, because when you give really, really rich people the opportunity to spend stupid amounts of money on stupid stuff on on, on something in their mind, some crazy idea, uh, yeah, you will end up with really bad things. Yeah, a lot of these coaches- Galloping Auto Sports has built a business model around that. <laughs> oh God, that thing that Will I Am made with them, or that thing that yeah, Justin yeah. Bieber's made with them recently? Oh, God, they're terrible. Hot garbage. Terrible. Gross. But it costs a. Not even small fortune, a fortune, a fortune. Yeah, a, a real, le- legitimate, a real like legitimate fortune. Yeah, like a, like someone's entire retirement, a good retirement. If you're lucky, a good retirement. <laughs> I only dream of having that much money as a retirement. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. So let's shut it down, Robbie. Yep. Uh, I need to figure out why my boss just called me. Yeah, probably nothing good. No, a long show. Um, 
excited. To I'm be back. so glad to be back. This I forgot good. how much fun this, this is. is way, in this person. is way better. In so person. much better in person. I'll guarantee you. It's gonna be nothing but comments like, "God, I'm so glad we're back together." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's fine. I I am too. Nope. Uh, so. We'll catch everybody next week. <laughs>